four kills for BDK Kid. Will he get the fifth one? Uh, but a big shatter from Ju Kohai takes the play from O again, putting the jackpot. And Big Disc wins the match. Massive blossom from Claws getting into the back. An impressive line. job there by Infus Game. He really straight hold for careless. Wow. Hold that four puts the close. Crimson pick up a third. Can he get a fourth? First one will be rocking with the dead bugs. Big up one. And now we see the shadow step of Triage coming down with the dead bugs. We got three on the point now. And inside. Holy Jalapeno just rolled straight. That's Karma is going to take up this victory. The top block picks up three. There will be illusion. <laughs> Arise, find three in the fight. Again. I full 6K for Shamanzi. Yeah. Oh. Finding four with the dead blossom. Yes, and now you better back down. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another match of the Overwatch Tranquility Tournament. Tonight, we've got some play-in matches for you. My name is Doran. Alongside me tonight is our very own Ski Free Yeti. How you doing? Oh, I am doing fantastic. It is playoff time, and that is a hype time. Uh, I am really excited to see these two teams go at it, and I, I'm really excited also because of kind of what's at stake here. But not only do you get me tonight, you are getting a second analyst who will also be updating us on the status of the other matches going tonight, and that is Kingdom. How's it going, Kingdom? Oh, it is going great. I am absolutely pumped for these amazing playoffs we're about to see. Multiple game updates are coming your guys' way throughout the night, so make sure you stay tuned. I we'll kick it back to Door here now. Door, what do you think about tonight, man? Tonight's going to be incredibly exciting. Of course, the match that we're watching, Alta 4 versus Prodigious. Prodigious, we haven't gotten to see on stream, and both of these teams really going to need to kick into the high gear coming into plans as well. Uh, Kingdom will be keeping us updated on DDoS versus Careless Pandas, which is Honestly, one of the matches I'm really excited to hear about the uh, outcome of, as well as Infius versus Invictus. So I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about those kind of matches. Well, Infius and Invictus is kind of an interesting one to me. Uh, there are mo many reasons as to why. One of the things that stands out to me is the name sound exactly the same. So I'm kind of glad we're not casting it. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, and uh, second of all, Infius has gotten hot lately. Invictus, kind of the opposite. So it's going to be interesting to see which of those teams uh, kind of bounce forward. I said Infius Gaming. What do you think, Kingdom? Oh, I have to agree with you on that. I think Infius Gaming definitely has the momentum. And what makes it so great is that both teams have been on a roller coaster. Now, as you said, Infius has been on the uh, uphill of the roller coaster uh, currently, as Invictus has been struggling. So I do think Infius does take this in a very close matchup. I say 4 2. 4 2. It, all right. Well, hey, and then the other match, too, uh, the match to talk about, we have Carlos Panas and DDoS. Really anticipated match. What are you thinking on that one? You know, I think that Harmony tier has been a lot more parody than the Discord tier, and I think that both these teams do have a chance to take it all the way, especially Careless Mandas. They had a really good early season recently, not so much, but I think they're slowly building back up to go into that championship run that they, we all know they're desiring. I think they're going to take this one in a uh, seven-game series. Seven-match series. I think it very easily could go the exact same way it's going to be excited but door I, I gotta get your opinion here you're kind of the voice of tranquility these days what about this match here alta four and prodigious uh these teams both been struggling lately so both teams struggling but we did see alta four not too long ago they ended up playing against i believe let me see real quick i apologize they had a loss versus meteors one to three but that was just after they had made a heck ton of roster changes and so after that they had two bye weeks so this will be the real test of uh, how strong this new roster is for them. Since they've had two weeks now to prepare for this, I uh, really want to see them give it their all. And I, I've got to give the advantage, though, to Prodigious. Their DPS line has just shown us how consistent they can be. And they've had the same DPS line throughout the season. However, Alt F4 really going to be a bit of a wild card in this matchup. We don't know too much about it, although I'm excited to see what they can come out with. I personally have to say, I think Prodigious comes in as the favorite. They have that DPS duo of Kaizen and Top. They just kind of stand out to me as a, a superior DPS duo. Uh, not to mention Juko High's main tank ability. Kingdom, what do you think here? Oh, oh, my apologies there. I was just getting some stuff ready. I think I have to agree with you. I do think that Juko High, as well as Ka Kaizen and Top, are the exceptional DPS duo, or excuse me, trio, if you will. Uh, I'm not, I know they're going to be switching off roles here and there, but on the side of Ulta 
for they do have that newer support line guava coming up from the harmony tier as well as hybrid coming just out of free agency on that championship run last season uh, we're gonna see if he could pull out some magic here tonight yeah, I'm really excited to see. You mentioned to me earlier before the match, Hybrid, another play to really look out for. His Moira has been very potent lately, and Guava de Jour, I've had the pleasure of casting his matches in the past, and he's really shown his uh, shown his own in Harmony. I'd love to see him do the exact same thing and have that hold up in Discord tier. But loading in, the first map pick will go to Alt F4, and they're going to be taking us to Li Zhang. And the first map being Night Market. What do you think about that, Yeti? I love the pick. Uh, Li Zhang is nice because you can play multiple different DPS comps pretty much across every single map. If you think actually plays into the favor, unfortunately, of Prodigious. Because they play a lot of off-meta stuff. We'll see how it goes. A lot of this is going to come down to this Metro match. We have O Stories and Top going to be battling it out. Seeing who can get on this point first as the teleporters come in and they're instantly into the brawl. It will be Daft trying to lay down the damage on this Reinhardt. Whittle, Whittle, both Reinhardt's just holding up the shield. This Metro is gaining charge. Whittle, Pep, Whittle just getting reined in on, though. His shield dropping very low. And all the point pressure is going the way of Prodigious as they force Alt F4 back, losing their main tank and their support. That'll be the point taken. First fight goes to Prodigious. You know, Kaizen really established dominance there, immediately getting two picks early on onto Alt F4. They could never recover. But I got to say, both teams, the same strategy. That's Symmetra's strategy. It, it could have gone either way there. Quite as easy as the initial fight. However, they are going to look for the teleport immediately on the point. The teleport dropping down under the window. Both things swinging. The guard still coming out on the window. Will like a madman on the Duke of. And the point all of a sudden turned around. It's flipped in favor of Alta for the remaining. All the time. And Death Fighting 2 and a massive shatter onto 3 from the side of Alta 4. And that'll be the flip at only 19% for Prodigious. You gotta wonder if maybe they didn't need to blow as much ult as they did into that fight, but at the same time, they're gonna have four more up more than likely for the next fight. Ult of four in a really good spot right now. Uh, they're gonna need a massive shatter from Juko High to get this thing back. Fortunately for ult of four though, it is only the shatter that will be the uh, difference here. Both the symmetric walls coming up could be huge if they decide to play around it. But uh, how do you think they're gonna want to defend this point? What angles do they want to play to avoid getting teleported on like they did against Prodigious? You notice they're playing a little bit further back than Prodigious was. It's definitely the right choice. I think they're benefiting from that right now. Uh, right now, you gotta figure Juko's oh. looking for that shatter. Oh, wow. There it is. The TP gets destroyed and they push on top of Prodigious, finding kill after kill after kill and breaking up that competition. Honestly, just absolute dominance and aggression from Whittle there. Just took over the fight. We're seeing five ults now up for up for Alt F4. We're going to see five ults for Prodigious as well. For me, it's going to come down to who is using the, uh, their uh, Lucio beat to the most effectiveness to negate more ults. The sound barrier is going to be super important. The Lucios both trying not to get caught in the middle of Shatters here, as well as the Graviton Surge will be a massive factor in these fights. And with the position that Alt F4 are holding, they have a lot of chokes here to decide to use it, but they're just going to back right up on the point. The Shatters huge! It lands onto three! A prodigious he charges in, and Daft with the Death Blossom landing right on top, finding four more kills. That'll be another fight going the way of Alt F4, showing us they came to play. Big play there from Alt F4, but it's worth noting, they used four ults into that fight. They will be last fight territory for Prodigious here, but they have a significant ultimate advantage. So if they can get aggressive here, they can easily get this point back. Chrono Angel will be looking to charge up this Graviton Surge. He's laying in the damage. The Shatter comes in along with the Death Blossom from Kaizen. We'll be fighting one, two, three, top, picking off Crash in the fight just when they need it. Prodigious, pick one more up. And I have to say, Ben just got back to the point. I mean, it was a matter of inches there, and that could have very easily been a C9 situation, but thankfully for them, they got back just in the nick of time. Well played fight, and all of a sudden, the ultimate game is dead even. Whittle coming up on his Shatter, and Ben coming up on a Coalescence. Which ultimate do you think is going to be more important? Oh, no, the teleport's immediately coming on point. Whittle stuck oddly in the back line. Alt F4 without a main tank, they're gonna get immediately collapsed onto. Whittle trading back onto bottom though, this fight not quite over. The main tank's still alive as they're slowly getting picked off. Guava picking off top though, that's a lot of damage down, but he's just gonna have to get right out of there. That was a really good job from uh, Prodigious there. They basically took away that teleporter. They were in the point, ready to collapse in on them as they dribbled through the teleporter. Alt F4 may have to abandon the strategy because I don't know if it's gonna work anymore. I think it was a really unfortunate teleporter we saw though as uh, Whittle ended up on one end of the wall and the rest of his team ended up on the other just free to get collapsed on and uh, Prodigious made sure they took full advantage of it. Right now I think Alt F4 needs to consider making a change and getting off this Symmetra. I think it's hurting them really badly right now. They're not, they're losing some of their initial pressure they can put on. Oh, top! 
But look out for Kaizen. Kaizen's dropping in on the main tank of Alt F4. He's dishing out lots of damage. He has his Death Blossom up. He's going to look to use it. He drops it. Not finding any kills. Widow swinging like a madman trying to hold on to this point. But 86%, the point ticking down. It's looking bad for Alt F4. Alt F4 really struggling to turn this around. That Doomfist is doing a lot of work. Even though he's got picked off early, just the pressure from his punches is enough to keep them at bay. Crash does have his Graviton Surge here. It will be huge, but it doesn't matter. As three people get picked off right at a main. Prodigious looking like they're going to want to close up this match. The Death Blossom dropped on point. Will be finding top. Daphne going down to bottom. Trading onto both the supports. A little bit of support combat on the point, but it doesn't matter. As Prodigious will seal up map one of Li Zhang Tower. Prodigious just did a better job making adjustments. That was basically what that boiled down to. All their four failed to make adjustments in the middle of the map, and that cost them that map without question. You know, Prodigious did a great job switching over to that Doomfist off the Symmetra, and by doing that, they secured that map really after they took that point without too much difficulty. Every fight was pretty one-sided. Uh, but we actually have an update now from Kingdom coming in. Uh, give us an update on one of those matches. Well, I'm going to give you an update on two of those matches, actually. Invictus won Elios 2-0 and currently leading 1-0, heading to uh, Hanamura, as well as Oasis. For map one, DDoS takes a 2-0 victory, uh, currently winning 1-0 and ready to go into the next map. DDoS and Invictus. That's big right there, guys. Keep, we'll be keeping you updated throughout the nights. Thank you, Kingdom. Back to the match. As both the main walls dropping, both these teams in extremely close quarters. The main freeze going down on both sides with no kills. Going either way, a big fire strike out of Jukai is going to be forcing Alt F4 off this high ground. Jukai almost nearly has Shatter already. It's going to be massive. He can get off. He landed so far. He looks for the pin, but he doesn't find anything but shotguns from O Story. And O Story shredding through the back line. Oh, 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 Looks like Dora's having a little bit of microphone issues right now, so we're going to have it over to me. Uh, looks like Whittle does get caught out here by that May wall along with Daft. They pop their own May wall to try to save the team there. It does look like they're able to hold off just fine. Uh, right now, both teams jockeying at the wall at, at the wall choke here. Who's going to drop that wall? And there goes another one. Whittle and O-Story stuck. A shatter from Whittle, but it looks to be potentially useless here as it looks like Alt F4 can't pack, pack, back him up on it. Alt F4 looks like they need to reset. I think Doris coming back in now. Microphone issues resolved, maybe? Microphone issues not resolved, unfortunately, so we're back again. We see Whittle get caught out again by the May Wall. Big May Wall over there from Kaizen, keeping them at bay yet again. All that four needs to look at a reconsideration of their tactics here. Continue to try to work on some microphone issues. Bear with us here while we're coming in. Uh, we're going to have Kingdom do some analysis while this is going on. See if we can get Door back in at mid-map here. Uh, Kingdom, and what are you? <laughs> well, let's look at the side of Prodigious currently with so many ultimates, and now both grabs are played, and the like, colorful lights show here as we're going to see what happens now. 59% already for Prodigious as they're going to win this. They are coming in right now. It looks like a controlling win there for Prodigious. A couple kills did come out for Alt F4, but it wasn't quite enough. They're continuing to try to work on some issues here, and it looks right. like Kingdom actually just DC'd from the lobby. We're having extensive DCing issues going on here. It's uh -oh. not. It's an it's a tranquility cast, everyone. But Dora, Dora is back I'm with back. us. Let's go, baby. All right, getting to this point, we got 79% in the way of predictions. I haven't gotten to watch much of what's going on. I've been messing with computer settings. But we're back now as the main wall goes in onto Jukahai. Forced back. The shield's going both ways, but the wall in reverse does not find anything from predictions. The pin goes down onto Jukahai. The main tank taken down. O Story, though, turned right back on as the beat is dropped for all time four. Looking for a little bit more here as the death boss will not be finding anything. Top of a massive shatter out of our boy Whittle is going to be looking to see up this point, but not if Chrono Angel has anything to say about it. This is still alive on point, still absolutely terrifying at maximum charge. O-Story is looking for something with his Death Blossom, but it's just desperation as Hybrid using his Coalescence, and he will be going down on point 99 to zero, looking to close this one up. Prodigious 2-0, taking map one. Prodigious just executing the plan better every single time. We're seeing fantastic play from Kaizen and Top really just controlling this at every aspect of at every aspect of the fight right now it's uh it's looking real all that four is gonna have to make some changes right now i think one of the most interesting things i'm seeing in this lobby is between juco high and whittle 
these two have been playing surprisingly they've both been playing very well we haven't been seeing the effect because it's really been out of both of them the shields have been incredible the shatters have been massive but they're playing very smartly they're playing around their compositions and both of them did a very good job of avoiding the may walls and not getting cut off too often there on a map that can be really dangerous for them Absolutely, I have to agree with that. Right now, you have to sit and wonder, you know, we talked about the DPS matchup, and I have to sit and think to myself, are O stories and Crash going to be able to keep up? I don't actually know at this point. They're really struggling to do so, and uh, we will have to see where things go forward from here. We're trying to get some of this scuffed lobby stuff taken care of. Thanks, guys, for being patient here. Alt F4 with the next map pick, and they got to pick a Assault map. What do you think? I think for a soul here, honestly, I'd love to see some Temple of Anubis, and it would take it off the Ryan Zarya comps that we enjoy seeing so much more than the double shield and uh, not not snooze fest, but it's a little bit slower pace, and Temple of Anubis does have a lot of that. But I do enjoy seeing Temple of Anubis. Of course, we did get to see Hanamura and Volskaya Industries yesterday. Pardon my uh, pardon my not checking, but no, uh, we don't Hanamura, talk about that. of course, everybody's everybody's favorite two CP map. It's been played forever. It's always been the one that's been considered. A little bit uh, better, less tilting than the others. However, it looks like they want to take it to Volskaya. Going to be wanting to play a little bit more aggressive. You can, of course, continue to play the Ryan Zarya and continue to play a little bit faster. But the Bastion comp is also a uh, possibility on the defensive end. All right. We're trying to clarify some rule situations. Bear with us, folks. Kingdom, uh, did anything stand out from you from this last match here? One thing stood out for me, and that was Kaizen, how aggressive he was on that Reaper. I mean, Alt F4 could not keep up with him. He was just all over the place. As as much as he wanted to uh, go as aggressive as he wanted into the back line, the front line, wherever he wanted, Kaizen on fire, proving why he is one of the better DPS in the Overwatch Tranquility community. All right, we did see the rest of Prodigious really all show up. We didn't see any real picks on the supports. A lot of the time, if they died, they were dying. As a team, they were clearly maintaining that group, which is super essential when you're playing that Ryan Zarya, and also Chrono Angel had a lot of massive plays, a lot of big bubbles, and honestly dishing out the damage on the Zarya that we're not really seeing from the opposite end of Alt F4. I think we're seeing like decent play from Alt F4. We're seeing all of their players show up, and okay, they're able to counter things, they're able to see things, they're aware, they know when the ultimates are coming out, but we're not really seeing any of these players pop off, and it's, like you mentioned, cr uh, Crash as well as O Stories. Really need to show up because when you're running this Ryan Zarya, the DPS all of a sudden have this opportunity to turn on and Kaizen is taking full advantage of it. And you really got to see the same thing from Alt F4. Well, and this is worth mentioning because this is actually a rematch of the preseason tournament as well. The preseason tournament championship. Uh, these two teams did go at it and it's worth noting Alt F4 won that in a first to three. He They won that three to zero. I've so got an interesting stat for you. In the oh. very first map match of the season... They played against one another and Prodigious won three to one. And it's worth noting that that one map was actually a map forfeit. Prodigious was having technical issues. So Prodigious rebounds from the 3 0 loss to take it 4 0 against the old incarnation of Alt F4. It's kind of interesting numbers. It's a bit of a grudge match here between these two teams, honestly. But Prodigious certainly looks like they're the better team at the moment. We'll see if Alt F4 could rebound. Yeah, I think they're really going to need to show some adaptability if they want to play this. It's a long series. It's a first of four. Who can last longer is going to be a massive question. And the more compositions, the more you can adapt you have in your back pocket, the better off you're going to be. Oh, 100%. They got to be adaptive here. And that's the big thing here with the maps, the map picking style we have. We have a small map pool of 12 maps that people are able to pick from in a map type rotation. So you have to be adaptable. You can't have preset strategies uh, for an entire set schedule of four maps like we do during the regular season. So I, I have to think the teams that benefit from that are teams like Prodigious who play a lot of off meta. But it'll be interesting to see here as these teams get lined up. And Ryan Zarya is coming out for both comps. One of the biggest things that I think I want to highlight is going to be Kaizen on this far. There's a lot of carry potential here. There's not a lot of hit scan from the side of Alt F4. It's going to take a lot to keep him at bay. Yeah, Kaizen's going to have a shooting gallery here. If Alt F4 is not careful, they have to play corners very well. Lining up oh. to that finds a pick on the puck or on the top. And that's exactly what you want to start this fight off. It's not over yet, though, as they start to push Prodigious out of this point. But the kill goes down on a Juco high <coughs> and Prodigious... Pardon me, just wants to get the heck out of there. Three minutes and 26 seconds on the clock. Not over for them yet, but certainly not the way you want to start off Volskaya. 
Absolutely not, but Prodigious did. Remember when I said they needed to play corners? Well, they did. They played corners. Kaizen got basically no all charge there. It's pretty good spot right now for Alt F4. They just got to continue to play this style. Yeah, and we see him really sitting in this tiny little room on point. That's going to be denying Kaizen a lot of airspace, but as Kaizen realizes this, he will be able to start moving forward, start getting this flanker up on the point as the rest of Prodigious waits for him to get into position. Alt F4 right now getting a lot of damage onto the uh, Prodigious here. Prodigious needs to stop and recover before they continue to push in. The story stepping up, pushing him a little bit further back. I really want to see Kaizen play more aggressive here. There's not too much in the way of hit scan to deal with them. Just that Reaper that can really poke up little by little. But he has so much potential to deal with damage, but it will be Ostory is dishing out the damage, taking out Ben the main tank down the barrage, I believe, committed from Kaizen, but it's not going to be enough as the kills all going in favor of Alta 4. Only Whittle going down, but that charge will get him to point in no time at all. Another fight to Alta 4, taking another minute off the clock just for one push. That was uh, not a great situation there for Prodigious. Uh, I have to say, think, I have to wonder what Kaizen was thinking doing the barrage from that height. You just can't get value from there. You you have to play that lower. I don't know if he was concerned about the Doomfist or the Reaper or what, but he got no value from that ult because of it and basically left his team hanging. I mentioned it last fight and I'll mention it again. Kaizen needs to start playing more aggressive here. There's no one for Alt F4 to deal with him, but he will just be playing over top, finally getting into a more aggressive position. He's on the backside of Alt F4. The shatter goes down and we'll be only hitting Jukai. Jukai though going down, traded back right back onto Whittle. But a Death Blossom from O Stories is going to be ending that fight nice and early, taking out Ben and Chrono Angels. The kills just rolling in yet again. Another minute. They're taking so long for these pushes because that far needs to get in damage, but it's just not paying off. Right, these fights are just not. A, Kaizen needs to consider taking some more aggressive angles. The Ultimate Four is giving the angles away, but he's not taking it. Prodigious needs to slow down. They will win the poke war if they slow down, but right now they are playing just too fast, and it, because of that, they are being punished. All right, we're seeing him step up to point a little bit earlier. Maybe not want to get rid of so much time as the Gravi Graviton Surge is committed, and Kaizen follows up with the barrage, finding four. All the first point troubles gone away. Don't need aggressive positioning, just need a Graviton, and it looks like it's going to be enough. The Graviton Surge was actually from the side of Ulta 4, but when they collapsed on it, Kaizen just decided he wanted to end the fight, and he did. Juko High did follow up with a Shatter of his own, but honestly, it wasn't needed. Kaizen cleaned it up with a clean 5k. Very good work from Kaizen, definitely redeeming himself a little bit from the earlier struggles. Yeah, pardon me there. With the the way the Graviton Surge ended up yes, working out, it, absolutely. Like it, it actually grouped <laughs> up Alt F4 better than it did Prodigious. But an aggressive push, and now with that Graviton Surge still in their back pocket, along with the Death Blossom, they're going to be looking to follow this one up, but it lands on the three members of Alt F4 top, grouped into the back line by, their own, by Alt F4's own Lucio. We're not going to be finding any kills, though, as Tim Joe will pick off top and... They're managing to stabilize here against the Graviton Surge. Top did the, uh, he death blossomed right after the beat. And that was, oh, and we do see O stories on his patented Widowmaker. That could spell the end. Oh, that is the end, actually, of the far as Kaizen makes the switch to the Ash and now the oh, Genji. To Genji? The, the Genji is an interesting play here. He's obviously trying to take O stories out of the fight. He wants this one done nice and early, but of course, Ostories will have a lot of opportunities to get shots in before Kaizen can really get on top of him. And of course, the rest of his team will have a, basically a 5v5 while these two are going at it. Ostories has the opportunity to really rain in damage on the rest of Prodigious until that Genji gets on top of him. The shot goes, but it's blocked. Meteor Strike will be zoning him out. Jukohai looking for a pin, won't be finding anything. Will though swing it and get a lot of ult charge at Ostories along with uh, Daft, I believe, will be taking out Whittle, dealing so much damage, taking off Kaizen. No more Genji to deal with that Widowmaker. And look at this point's just going to be completely in favor of Alta 4. Just need to clean up this fight a little bit. Chrono Angel, though, not quite done with this one, dealing a lot of damage. He will be getting some bonus ultimate charge, getting an extra about 20% there. As they're going to look to do a little bit of maybe a soft reset here. As uh, they're still inside the door, they're through that choke, and this fight is not over to Mojo. Forced to <laughs> take the bubble. But the Shatter's massive, it lands onto two. Of Alt F4, they're both followed up onto the sound barrier is dropped out of prodigious and they're looking to take this point. Sweeping it. They have the Gravitron for the recontest here as well. Hybrid is gonna be trying to lay it out, but Alt F4 is in dire straits here. There's the grav, and there it is. They have oh, the not quite. to go for a crash. Gets in the shields are up and the kills need to be in the favor of Alt F4 if they want to hold this one. But Juka is swinging like a madman. The shatter finds three. It's gonna be absolutely huge here. It's looking like it's gonna close that fight. 
right on out. This point, just a little bit more to go. A desperation shatter from Whittle just did not find enough. Just came short of taking out Prodigious. Many of them following very low. Prodigious did a good job of recovering after the first, the first struggles on the first point. Uh, and really, they ended that with a, an okay time bank. But Alt F4 has to be okay with that as well. They left themselves with a lot of time here. Uh, Kingdom, what'd you see there? I saw Kaizen having a lot of struggles with that far and not really getting as much value as he could, not taking the aggressive angle. Uh, and I did also see O stories just becoming the aggressor, becoming that just absolute slugger on the Reaper on first point. Unfortunately, couldn't keep that aggressiveness up as Kaizen did go the Genji route and started just cleaning up as well as the tank line four. Alt F4 did struggle to keep up with the, alt, the tank line of Prodigious, though the healing on Alt F4 was just absolutely nuts. Hybrid and, and uh, excuse me, Hybrid was just popping off completely as well as Tomoho, Tomojo, Hojo Jojo, did so well <laughs> on that support line and it was just absolutely, absolutely crazy. All right, we're seeing an interesting comp come out here from Prodigious. If they want to stick to this, and it looks like they are, they're rolling out with a Winston Junkrat Mercy Ana. I don't, I don't even know how to break this comp down. What do you think with Yeti? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question again? This my is wife, my wife interesting is coming out of Prodigious. <laughs> you mentioned they were used to playing some off-meta stuff, but uh, this is out there. I would definitely agree. I, I mean, this is double shield, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. Let's go double shield I mean, for it. It, it certainly is something, let's put it that way. Uh, I will have to. Uh, I'll have to get back to you on how I feel about this comp because I'm not actually sure. <laughs> this is going to be a rough one though. Jukai forced to dive into a Doomfist and a Reaper. There's going to be a lot of damage coming in onto this Winston. He wants to get on top of these supports, but they're just going to be speeding right on out of that. Lucian Mares. So potent. He goes in for the dive onto Whittle. Whittle completely separated from the team. Huge he's dynamite. Them, oh my Huge. goodness! Top killing absolutely everything in his path here. And uh, Alt F4 just needs to find some way either out of here to get a soft reset in. Right now, the dynamite. What else went down in that fight that really forced him into a good position for it? Uh, it was basically top and top alone. Uh, top just kind of that dynamite and then the headshot on a Tomojo. There's just nothing after that. It was easy, easy pickings at that point. They missed that Lucio healing. There was just nothing they could do. It was it was so easy after that ult. And by the way, Bob is making his an appearance very soon. Already 80%, that Ash ultimate able to charge up so fast. All tough for it, looking to push this one maybe a little bit more systematically. Now that they know what they're coming up against, getting all their players in that room, the dynamite only going down onto hybrid this time as they push the Orisa through the high ground. Does she have the fortified stop it? She's still <coughs> taking all these frames from the Reinhardt. Widow stuck in a drunk red trap. <coughs> Buying him just enough time. It's just enough time for me to cough as well. Daft though, will be finding the pick on a Chrono Angel on top. The problem on the Ash will be taken out. O stories and all the kills. Going in the way of Alt F4. The DPS, though, still left alive for Prodigious. Oh, Prodigious. no. The bomb goes in, and the Bob goes down. Bob, what are you doing? Top will be left to do this one on his own devices, and he won't be able to. Poor Bob. Uh, get your Fs in the chat for Bob. He is somewhere at the feet of the giant robots in the Volskaya Lake there. Uh, thanks for playing, Bob. Well, uh, you can't say they didn't try. Bob came in. Bob went out. But the next point, we see less of an ultimate advantage, as we saw from Prodigious in their secondary push uh, coming in for Alt F4. It should be a bit more of an even fight here, but a pretty sizable time bank at five minutes. How do you think Prodigious need to hold this one? I think Prodigious, the the, the Ash is working well, but I, I, I'm happy they changed that comp up. That tank comp was just not a good idea. Oh, of course here both, comes he, Oh, oh, it goes high. It looks to drop onto Whittle. He knows where he is, he knows he's in the room. And Hybrid though, he will. Get out of it. But he goes right into a Reinhardt charge about Juko High. Finding two with his own shatter. He's gonna be picking up two more kills, but he's stuck in a room. That was a uh, shatter guess, from wow. Whittle at basically five health. I have to wonder what he was going through his head there as Prodigious stabilizes. That was honestly a, a wasted shatter there from from Whittle. Uh, and right now, Prodigious looks to be in a great spot. And yeah, not really much to be found other than an ult advantage, though, in Alta 4's way so they have this one push where they're going to have a decently sizable advantage and they really need to take advantage of it they have both support alts it could be big here that could give them the advantage they need but daft has to play closer to his team he's so low right now last fight we saw kaizen dishing out tons of damage on that junk forcing him into that mini health pack room and all of a sudden 
They know they need to not be playing in these confined quarters, but how do they get on top of the DPS when the DPS are playing so far back? Whittle forced to go through Jukahai as both coalescence that they're dropped, as well as the Bob this time not going off the map, dishing out tons of damage onto Whittle, forced to tank this, and it's going to be so difficult. Jukahai, though, charging into absolutely Ooh. nobody, but it will not be punished as all the kills are going in favor of Prodigious. Juko High did a ski free Yeti charge there. I have to wonder the I have to have question marks on that one. Uh, and he drops there. He basically never was brought back above 50 health after that charge. Uh, but uh, if one thing I want to point out from that last fight, Alt, Alt 4 had an ult advantage before the walk up. The massive poke from Kaizen and Top. It is just too much. They charged their ults while they were walking up to the point, and then they had the ult advantage. So the, the the amount of poke coming from Prodigious right now is almost overwhelming for Alt F4 to deal with. Yeah, Jugahai looking for a little bit of the ski three special in the middle of that fight, but it won't be him this time, as it will be the rip tire from Kaizen that has a chance to have a large effect, but forget that. If Top's hitting his headshots like that, Daft's going down immediately, not making his way all the way up the elevator. He will get taken out. Definitely struggling right now, Alt F4 to deal with this poke. I do think they need to they need to consider some different angles here. Right now, this is not working. Uh, they're trying to play up on the high ground, but they're leaving themselves so vulnerable to all this splash damage coming in from Kaizen and Top. And Chrono Angel is about to get his alt and bottom as well. The four alts for each side. Actually, Alt F4 is about to get six though. They look could absolutely clueless what to do here. This is going to be a massive fight, and whoever wins is going to come out with a big ultimate advantage unless one team decides to hold back and play for it. But it will be an aggressive play from Alt F4 as they're the first people to get their Graviton Surge up, but it will be the Riptire taking out Daft as well as the Sound Barrier to protect everybody. But O-Stars with that high oh. noob will be finding one kill or will just on the top spot and Whittle dragging like a madman swinging into the back line of Prodigious. They want this point, but it won't be clean. Whittle Every ult has been used. Charge running straight through prodigious and the spawns are starting to come in they need to win this and they need to win it now no ticks going the way of alt f4 they're swinging desperately just needing something they need to break this point open jukai coming in finds a pick on a tomojo oh, that could be pick. huge widow pebble though trading right back onto him the ryan punished for the aggressive charge two ticks down they're looking to regroup and get on top of this point bottom the first person on the coalescence dropped from ben this could be the equalizer dash charging on punch will he find anything he finds it onto bottom widow pebble though Whittle finding nothing with his own charge. Top and Kaizen fragging out like absolute madmen, and it looks like that's gonna be it. Two points, but Tomojo not done. But it's Kaizen so deep in the enemy oh, back line. They're trying their absolute best, but it looks like it's only gonna be two with one minute left on the clock. Alt F4 needs to find something. I'm sorry, that was Juko in the enemy back line, and my goodness, he is chatting his way up. I have to point out the patience from Podigis there, giving up two ticks, letting them take those two ticks, and then collapsing in together onto the fight. That's what did it for them. That pe preaching patience there is so important. Sometimes it's worth giving up a tick or two, and that was great play from Podigis. Oh, oh Tim. No. 40, oh, no. Seconds left. It's two relatively speedy heroes. This isn't as punishing as it could be. They'll get back to this point relatively fast, but it means they only have one push here going to this, and they need to make it worthwhile. And they Dash only have one on the healer. Trace. The lack of healing right now could hurt them. Hybrid has to burn all of his energy, all of his resources into this fight, and Prodigious, or Ulta 4 is going to be in big trouble here if they're not careful. I think one of the biggest things to walk out, watch out for is Juko High Shatter. He's hit, been massive with them. All night, and he's gonna be looking to be massive with them here. Little Pebble Loot, and then it finds oh! two! Big one, Hyper though, finding the kill on a Juka High right when he drops the shield. Ostroys finding bottom, crash, fragging out is all set for three seconds on the clock. They're looking to take this one to overtime. Prodigious wanting to play this one in their favor. The Junk Rat Rip Tire, gonna be finding nobody as the kills starting to go down on. Point. Still members left alive for Prodigious. Alt F4 needs to find a way to close this one. Kaizen dishing massive damage out on this. Alt F4 c 9 nope. No, not quite yet. Tomojo making sure he's on top of the Gritic <laughs> Graviton Flux will be committed as the Coalescence is as well. This isn't over prodigious, holding on to this point like Absolute Madman. And the Massive beat, beat. drops from bottom. We'll be keeping his team alive for so much longer. The kill's going absolutely both ways. Ostor is finding one, but trading right back onto him. This is a massive advantage. Prodigious has the spawn advantage. They will keep fighting these kills, but Daft popping off the Tracer, finding two kills. Top though, training on Tomojo. That will be a healer down. Top needs to find something here as there the point up and in overtime. Alt F4 takes it. Alt F4 did a great job there of getting it back together after they lost that initial recontest. They, they got themselves back together. Their DPS made the plays when they needed to, and they have a chance to at least draw out this map.
Well, it I looks like we actually, we're actually going to go quickly to Kingdom, who has some other updates. Uh, yes, we do have some updates. We do have an absolute barn burner tonight between these two teams. Both going ham, both DPS lines popping off. But for Infius versus Invictus, Infius wins a nail-biter in Han Hanamura 2-1. Curse <laughs> score 1-1, heading to King's Row, as well as Careless Pandas versus DDoS. Map 2, Anubis. Pandas win it 2-1, and the tie game is tied 1-1. One one. Well, one of these games go to 7 I'll eat my pants. Like I'll, I'll get a picture. It'll be up on on Twitter or whatever. I'll eat my pants if all these games go to seven. That'll have been every play and match up until now going to seven maps, and all these teams so evenly matched. This is going to be a good night. Let the record show he has volunteered to eat his pants. Everyone, it's going to be an interesting night. We had a lot of map sevens last season in the tranquility community. I would not be surprised to see it again. We have some interesting matches in every way all across here. But I think Prodigious has a clear advantage. Alt F4 is just looking to draw out the map right now. They have no chance to win it, but Prodigious can draw this one out. But we see the Bastion set up here from Alt F4. Only 1 minute 15 seconds on the clock. I think this is a smart pick from Alt F4. It really takes time to break down a Bastion comp. It takes ultimate. It takes getting into position. And that can be a massive advantage for Alt F4 as it can really push people to have to play more aggressive than they want to into this Bastion comp. And it's Bastion Pharaoh to boot. They'll have a ton of damage coming in if they set up an appropriate crossfire. Ostor is actually doing a really good job right now. However, Prodigious only do need one tick as they take the Megaroom. They will be playing the low ground. The main wall goes up. The point starting to tick down crash force to drop down juke high will be dishing out tons of damage onto him but the invulnerability field will be keeping him alive just a little bit longer the point taking down for prodigious ever so slowly cries and finds a pick on a crash as well as chrono angel onto ostroids that's a lot of damage down if you're the side of alt f4 you don't want to see that ostroids are right back up these rockets could be huge if he lives just a little bit longer but he's taken out this task is up to whittle and daft this bastard needs to start dishing out dish damage and dishing it out now 22 seconds left as juke high rolling onto the point with this ball will get damage out mm. So the needs to fall back. Oh no. Juko High did not need to get aggress as aggressive as he did. And they're going to pay the price for it. And it looks like B Bottom might be t uh, stuck out in the open. Oh, nope. He gets away. Nine seconds later to close out this map. I want to see a rotation from Daft into the Mega Room here. If he does not, they will be right on top of him with this Tracer. As the point goes into overtime, starting to tick down. Who's going to be the man to touch? Daft forced off the oh, high no. ground. The Tracer blinks into the water. And Bottom needs to find something here. The Ant Matrix goes down the wall as well. We'll be going down from Kaizen immediately after it goes up. Bat bottom looking for something and Alt F4 looking for the draw. It looks like they'll be able to do it. Alt F4 is going to be able to draw this out just by the hair on their chins. And we do have no score on Volskaya. You know, Ski Free, if this goes to eight maps, do I still have to eat my pants? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Kaizen, of course, doing a great job with this barrage, following up here on the Graviton Surge from the opposing team, setting him up perfectly there. I believe Jukai actually hit a massive shadow that set him up for that, that I did not realize he hit during that fight. Absolutely huge from him. It definitely, I have to say, so Kingdom, what stood out for you from that match? First of all, 2CP, smile. What a fun game mode. Full Sky Industries ended up being a draw, but that was just the opposite of what we expected because both teams were just hammering away. There had to be a clear winner, but no. Both teams were just smacking each other back and forth. The DPS line on both teams popped off, and, you know, I do think that Top definitely has made a statement in this matchup. Hey, hey, you know, Kaizen's a great DPS, but I'm here too. That Ash tonight was filthy. Every single Dynamite was hitting. His Bob, though, he did go off the map that one time. He was just going swimming, you know. Just got to get warmed up. Sometimes <laughs> you need a nice little swim before you get into the action. And that's exactly what he did the next time he came out. That Bob was massive. You so many cooldowns on the side of Alt F4. And with Hybrid and, excuse me, uh, Hybrid and Tomojo just trying to keep things uh, together for Alt F4. Great game, game managers on the support line on both sides. And this map ended up being a tie. All right, Alt F4, we saw, I think one of the biggest things, one of the biggest upgrades we saw out of Alt F4 is Ostroy has really started to show up. He got a lot more aggressive on that Reaper. And of course, getting to play the far in overtime was no, no small feat as well. As uh, Alt F4 will have the map pick here, they decide to take it to King's Row. What do you think this means for the series? I think right now, honestly, King's Row, I think, does put a little bit of favor towards Alt F4. But at the same time, we're seeing kind of a much more even map that I think a lot of people were initially expecting. Uh, and uh, I, ha I have to give uh, the edge, honestly, the rest of the way. I think Prodigious is just in a prime spot. I really do. I think Alt F4 is going to be playing from behind. That said, we've seen Alt F4 play from behind in the past, like all last season. And yet they still made a run in the playoffs. 
it, it very easily could happen again. Um, I, I could very easily see it coming coming back to all the four, despite the I, I think a clear skill advantage right now for Prodigious. I think one of the biggest things here for Alt F4 will be the fact that they're playing these comps that they've been playing consistently. And of course, Prodigious coming out with a little bit of wacky stuff. And I think the longer it goes, the more Alt F4 gets used to it, the better they're going to be able to play against it. And I think that consistency is really going to pull out from in the end. Of course, the map score only 1-0 in favor of Prodigious. So they've got a long way to go. And they're going to need to pull a lot of wacky comps out if they want to continue playing that way. Otherwise, they're going to be forced into the mirror matchup up against a scary Alt F4. Definitely a scary team. I, I, Alt F4 is always scary. They, they, you never, never, ever write off Alt F4. That's just a silly thing. We saw Specs write off Alt F4 at the beginning of the season, and look what ended up happening. They're in the playoffs. Uh, you you got to sit here and sit. Uh, you got to sit here and wonder if it's ever a wise at time to write off any team, except for maybe Harmony and Chaos. I guess we can write them off right now. <laughs> Rip Harmony and Chaos. Rip Harmony and Chaos. I'm probably going to get from this lobby because Cav is our current producer. <laughs> I think. <laughs> One of the most interesting things uh, about King's Road to me is I feel like it it usually it brings out the better team even more so. It's one of every team's most scrims map. For whatever reason, everybody likes scrimming it. And so I think everybody has their own set strats, and all teams tend to be extremely coordinated, and they need to have their plans in mind here if they want to look to win it. And oftentimes, the more coordinated the team that's better able to work together has a huge advantage on this map. And it'll be interesting to see how that affects it considering the type of compositions that Prodigious like to run. I would definitely agree with that. Uh, I, I, it's it's going to certainly be interesting here. Prodigious likes to run so many unique things, but I, again, I feel like that plays into the favor of them in the long term again in this specific match. You know, I, I think because of just the raw skill level that the DPS players have, I think it plays in their advantage. Now, will it play out the rest of the way? This, the, I, I don't know that. It very, it might not. So, it, we'll, we'll we continue to follow this one closely, guys. It's going to be interesting the rest of the way. They're lining up. They do have Daft. Gonna be looking for an early Maywall here. Goes down and does not find Jukohai. Immediately, Kaizen will be taking a more aggressive position. The Onus will be on O Stories here to force him out of the sky, but he has all this time to play around the side of this building. And top, though, will be found the first pick on the crash. A headshot immediately out from this Widowmaker. Top with a huge pick onto the, uh, the Zarya. They don't have any shields to protect Whittle. We're seeing Alt F4 have several players dipping low, and, well, all that's left is all, it's all over but the crying for Alt F4 here. That's for sure. It is only first point. Second point, though, notoriously difficult to defend. These corners offer great points to take away a lot of time, but getting to the end of point two is uh, oftentimes considered a formality at this point. It, is, would, it happens very frequently. I would have liked to have seen Prodigious take a more aggressive position. We didn't see that, and I think that was a mistake. I, I really do. I would like to have seen them gone up a little further. Uh, we finally do see them moving up. They honestly could have taken up to the next corner there very easily, but they gave it away. And now Ult F4 is going to be able to attest that the defend of this arch is a prime defensive position. It's going to be tough for uh, Prodigious to get through it. Yeah, Prodigious had the opportunity to take about two corners away from them there. Of course, nobody on Ult F4 getting spawned badly. But you could have at least gotten through this choke for free. And Jukohai is going to have a real hard time in this round here getting in. But Top already on the back line of Alt F4. And it doesn't matter because the shatters big out of Jukohai. And they're looking to clean this one up with ult advantage alone. And some clean play out of Top getting behind that Orisa and dishing out the damage. The DPS chasing down to Mojo on the Lucio. He's got nowhere to go. And a great play there. Jukohai setting up a massive shatter and then a ski free Yeti charge into the enemy back line. Great play from Jukohai and all of Prodigious. Now they've pushed forward to the corner. Definitely the right play here from Prodigious, setting themselves up for some success. This is going to be a much better spot for this Ryan Zarya to play in. There's a lot of corners that they can use to avoid a lot of this damage. And Kaizen's going to have a field day here playing outside of this choke that Alta 4 forced into. And Daft, the first man, and going to be using abilities, dropping extra low. Whittle, though, trying to find something as Fortify forced out the Coalescence. It's dropped from both sides. They want to stop it, and they want to stop it here. They need to stabilize. Alt F4 looking for something. Daft charges up the punch and finds top. A massive pick onto the Reaper from all, from Prodigious. And Ostor is going absolutely ham inside of the back line, and they need to get out of there. Alt F4 barely managing to stabilize. Hmm. The top went first before the bottom. Interesting. Anyways, no, it was a great, great play there from Alt F4. Really stabilized that. Uh, they did a good job of letting Poe just push into them and then just taking advantage of it. They have a big advantage if they play these fights slow and wait for the picks from Daft and O Stories with the cleanup. That's the right way to play this comp. 
But, but, I have to say that we do see that Farah has that barrage yet again, and that could be a crucial alt here if played appropriately. We see sound barriers coming in from both sides. Crash, though, almost up to his grid of flux, and it's almost definitely going to be saved for that. So I think a lot of this fight is going to come down to how well they can deny Kaizen the value uh, from his barrage. And uh, whether or not the beat comes out for Chrono Angel's grab, I feel like maybe Tomojo has a little bit of an easier job blocking the ultimate combos coming out of uh, Prodigious. But... Either way, this is going to be a tough play for either of the Lucios. There's lots of stuff that can kill either of these teams. Wow, Daft with a huge play, taking out the Farah. That's an inexcusable air from Kaizen. And the base and in that situation here, Ult 4 is just going to sweep through them. They follow this one up, they're pushing like Madman Jukahai, looking for something. He's not going to find anything. Ben fighting a, a courtesy pick onto Daft, and they're going to push him all the way back to spawn. Give him oh the pepper shaker goodness. shield. Give him the pepper shaker shield at the spawn door, please. <laughs> I know Kingdom's smiling right now. Please. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I gotta say, that was a great play from Alt F4 there. Did an amazing job. And now look at these check marks. We're seeing 11 coming up. Both the sound barriers still up for both sides. And it's just gonna be time taken off the clock. No ultimates used from either side. And the Graviton Surge is used along with the Bongo. The Barrage comes in. We'll be finding the pick on the. Crash and the Death Blossom countering it, but not gonna be finding anybody, just gonna be zoning off Prodigious for the time being. Alt F4, gonna be looking to back up here by themselves a little bit of time, but top lands the Death Blossom. If you're gonna find anybody, absolutely not. Alt F4 doing a great job peeling away from the Reaper, but the pick's still going the way of Prodigious. They're forced back. Alt F4 has no position, no tanks, no way to hold on to this point, and Prodigious push through point B. Looks like Prodigious has it comfortably as Crash decides to live the fight another day. He does have that Graviton or Gravitron Flux here. That's going to be a big piece for the next fight. But we do see two alts in here with the, uh, the sound barrier to negate that Graviton Flux, as well as the Earth Shatter from Juko High, the ever present Juko High Earth Shatter. Fear it. Run from it. Like Blizzard just want to make our job difficult with Gravitic Flux and Graviton Surge. It is beyond difficult. But of course, only the Gravitic Flux will be up for the side of Alt F4. So they need to take this fight at this corner. This is a prime position for them to hold. If they can hold here, they can start holding a little bit further forward. And Juga is going to have a hard time pushing some of these longer angles. But the further they get, the more of an advantage Prodigious gains pushing these corridors. The Gravitic Flux lands onto two, onto three. But the <laughs> Sound Barrier will be there to deny it. Kaizen dishing out so much damage onto the back line of Alt F4. We'll be finding all the kills. In the meantime, Gravitic Flux be damned. Prodigious is going to push this one through. Hybrid gets in really late there. That's going to hurt them a lot. We see Daft go with the Meteor Strike, but he has no health. He's going to be melted the second he touches the ground, and he was. The Point desperation. Really pushing quick enough. Point zero six left, and all the ults will be used. Kaizen not going to be finding anything with the Barrage. One kill going the way Alt of either team. Stabilize. But Tomojo will be finding on the bottom. The kills flying in both directions. They need to hold on to this Point Chrono Angel, though. A massive amount of charge. Hybrid le last minute left on the Point, and it's not going to get up. The point looking to get push Ostroy so on Reaper going down in no time. All I gotta say is top came out on top after that after that last fight. Dominating performance by him. Alta 4 needed to re to reset quickly and get restabilized. Unfortunately, Hybrid was not able to get out on his Moira and Daft ulted when he had basically no health. Not a great reset from Alta 4. They had an opportunity to get that fight back if they had the rest of their team available. Kingdom, uh, I know you have some updates, though, for us. I do have an update for you. Map 3, Infius takes the big 3-2 victory on King's Row over Invictus. Current score 1, or excuse me, 2-1, to one, Infius heading into Junkertown. Infius looks to take a victory there over Invictus and continue the hot run they've been on recently. Invictus trying to bring one back with the power of Melts on his side. Uh, but Dor, this match, really exciting so far. <laughs> this match, yeah. Exciting is one word for it as Prodigious is coming out with some wonky stuff and Kaizen again on this Junkrat. I think he's going to be just as potent as ever. But a Symmetra Strat looking to be played from, uh, from Alta 4. Where do you think they want to head with this? I, I I think this is an interesting play, and I'm not sure what they're intending on doing. I definitely don't understand it. I think if you're going to run the Symmetra here, you run the Bastion with it. And I don't necessarily love the Torbjorn. Um, Coward. Yeah, well, that's fair. That's fair. So the Torbjorn buffs are next patch. Somebody should please tell Alta, Alta for that. And you never know. They could be switching it up and just messing with us in spawn. That's very possible here. 
but uh, I, I don't love the current comp from Alta 4. I think it, they're making a few mistakes by going with that Torbjorn, but then again, what do I know? I'm just some plat. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I've been lining up on the Junker. Gonna have a pretty uh, pretty big field day lining up, trying to take care of everyone. They TB onto the statue! We saw this last night, and we're seeing it again out of Alta 4 as they take the aggression. Immediately sands the Bastion, the Torbjorn. Looking to drop a turret on the point. Torbjorn going to work here as he uses that E to get in. I'm sorry, I don't know the name of it. I never see Torbjorn. I never get to Torbjorn it. Torbjorn currently dancing on the point for some reason. Going in like a madman, and Kaizen's got to find something. And absolutely no help inside this hotel. The sports re-engage onto the point. Chrono Angel going to be stepping back on that Zarya. A massive charge of will get taken out, though, as the kills raining in death. The Torbjorn monster himself closing out this point. I take it back. I was wrong. I am sorry, everyone. The Torbjorn was the right choice. Daft is right. I am wrong. He is handsome. I am not good looking. He is intelligent. <laughs> I am dumb. <sighs> great, great work from all that four. Swapping onto a Doomfist. Showing oh, come that on. We're, we're not the only ones that can run these strats. That was a... Uh... That was a lot of fun. We saw actually the same play come up from Minty Hippos. They ran it though with a bastion on top of the top of the statue to a little bit less success than the Torbjorn. So uh, I feel like the, the top of the statue just wasn't quite entirely necessary, but hey, it worked to, it worked to perfection, you have to say. So they backed up, they gained point control. It's an intimidation play, is what it is. It is. It's a, it's a it's a it's a it's throwing it all out there and laying it on the table. His daft dives into the enemy backline. Right, Shuka High Shield dropping extra low. The Coalescence is committed from both sides. Both Rhinos can be swinging in here, and it will be Whittle, the first man to go down. The <laughs> tire committed, and it lands onto two. A big one there. Closing it out. Kaizen going to be winning that fight for him. You notice the mere threat of that tire suddenly left Alt F4 in a panic. As soon as that happened, they turned to run, and two of their players fell. It was just the mere existence of it. I don't know if it's PTSD from a Mousy tire in the past or what, but my goodness, a great play there from Prodigious. If we take a look at Alt F4's yeah, comp, they don't really have anything other than a Whittle that can take out a, uh, a Rip Tire in one shot. And with Whittle out of the fight, that's certainly one that was... Uh, oh my oh. goodness, Crowdage will find a quick pick on the Oak Stories. As a Pro fight looking to be taken oddly in the cafe here, but it doesn't matter. Oh. Massive in either direction and Jukohai getting the better of Whittle. Huge play from Jukohai. The block and then the counter shatter taking out all five of Alt F4. What a play from Juko High, showing a Rhine clinic right now. Absolutely incredible out of him. We're seeing the ultimate start to roll in for Prodigious here. If they take this one more fight, we're certainly going to see the ultimate economy start rolling in their direction, but they get the early hold inside the choke. The Graviton Surge is committed. Juko High swinging like a madman. He looks for a pin to get somebody out, though. He will get knocked out of it. Flash out of it is Juko High, and the kill is starting to roll in Alta Force favor. Maybe doing a great job disengaging there and finding the picks onto the back line, playing so well against that Gav Graviton Surge. Pardon me. <laughs> really good play there. I definitely am excited to see if they can get to this to the point, though. I will say there is a massive alt advantage right now for, uh, for Prodigious. If they can get back to the point here, they have a clear advantage on the recontest. And if you look, Kaizen's behind the enemy team. Six ultimates in alt at four is going to have to frag out in manual mode, three minutes left on the clock. Daft looking for something, will not be finding anybody, but the Riptire denied any value, not finding any kills here. Hybrid using it out, but he oh, finds what? another shatter on the another three, and three picked up by top. Comboing their ultimates perfectly, they pick up another fight. Oh no, Kaizen is in your house, he has Riptire. Oh no, oh wait, that's Jukohai at your front door, it doesn't matter. Juko High, just incredible Reinhardt play. Reinhardt isn't meta, they say, and that's true. But Kaizen I, doesn't care, or Juko High doesn't care about your meta. I love what Prodigious did in that last fight, though. They pushed up, they took the very aggressive choke, and they weren't punished for it. They managed uh -huh. to get their spawns back in time with the ultimate advantage. You can't help but feel like that was intentional. It's a repeat right now of the problems that Alt F4 was having on Volskaya. The damage from Kaizen is just far too much for Alt F4 to be dealing with. They're having to burn so much healing just to get through. Hybrid's running out of resources as he comes to the point. Right now he has almost no healing juice and his team is taking huge damage. This time ultimates even both ways, but bottom does have that sound barrier. This could be the game winner for him and it's all going to be up to Whittle here. The Reinhardt 1v1 will be coming in. Both these Reinhardts will be coming up on the Shatter at just about the same time as we see 80% for either one. The High Noon used on the flank does not find anybody. Top though will be flashing. <laughs> Top will get flashed and the pick does go off onto him. Two kills in the favor of Alt F4 and a massive Zarya dishing out damage on this card. 
Uh, Juko High found himself inside the enemy spawn, and I'm not sure what he was planning on doing with that, but it didn't work out. Uh, Juko High and the rest of the team fall for did loses that point. They do have a time bake advantage. It appears they it appears they will have a time bake advantage, but they got to hold them off here for another three minutes. Of course, three minutes. That is plenty of time to take this point. See, however, a big ultimate advantage in the way of Prodigious. They're looking to roll this one, and maybe hold a little bit further back than we saw Alta for decide to. They will take this neutral fight though around the corner. And I think a little bit of a positioning advantage for Prodigious, but it doesn't matter. It's Coalescence to drop from both sides and another massive shatter on it. Juko High, how is he landing? It's just a uh, superior Ryan play. It just is. Juko High is controlling the tank fight right now. He is the reason that Prodigious success. Obviously the DPS line is doing great, but Juko High is in complete control. Every other team fight, he has shatter and every other team fight, he dominates with it. He has Whittle absolutely mentally boomed. He's got his mind downloaded, but Kaizen doing a little bit of a feed here as a little bit too far forward, trying to get some value with that Junkrat, but he's not gonna be finding it. The spawn though will come up in time, so long as Prodigious can disengage in time, but the Riptire directly out of spawn gonna be buying him a bit more time, a little bit of interesting use of it here as it goes up onto the high ground, looking for something, the time is surely ticking down on this one, and it doesn't find anybody. Daft, though, finding bottom on the backside, trading back, they thought they were safe, but it doesn't matter, and they're swinging in. The barrier is dropped top though. We'll get immediately solo shattered by Widow. I like what we're seeing from him at high noon. We're looking to close out this oh. fight. If they can frag this one out, they can end with a decent time bank. It might have been a little bit of an overinvestment though. We do see three alts coming back here from Prodigious. If they can touch, they can touch. And the shatter! Another big shatter! What are the finds the pin onto him? Kills going absolutely both ways. Both coalescence is dropped. It's gonna be up to Daft here on the Doom Fist. He has that one shot potential. But the coalescence kills Ben getting the better of Ulta 4 here. Crash though trying to do something about it. He has a such a high charge. One minute seven on the clock, and it looks like Predict is gonna hold on to this one just a little longer. Prodigious right now looking really good. Love the play there, the very solid recontest, and Ben with a massive 4K. Just a really good play there for Prodigious all around, guys. Uh, it's, it, Juko High was taken out of that fight. That's the first time he's really been out, but it didn't matter because Ben picked up the mantle and said, we don't need a shield anymore. I'm starting to feel like in these neutral fights, it's looking pretty early, if not in Alt F4's favor. Oh, scratch that. It doesn't matter, though. Kai's going to pick onto... Whittle and Chrono Angel taking out Crash. So much damage. Kaizen is dishing out. And it just doesn't matter how you approach. It's just too much, too much right now from that poke. Kaizen just getting so much value. We haven't seen much from massive rip tires, but it's just the primary fire. Speaking of massive rip tires, we could just end this for right now with this rip tire here. It's absolutely terrifying. Like every single ultimate from the side of it goes in and it lands on the hybrid. Although Jubai <laughs> stuck in the back line, the Reinhardt 1v1 swinging like a madman. Whittle, they need to get on top of the car and they don't make it! Oh, they don't oh make it! Oh my goodness, a great zoning mine from Kaizen is going to be just enough to keep Daft off of the cart. Prodigious, good play there, keeping them at bay. That poke has just been insane, and Alt F4 is just not changing enough. It was just, it, it just wasn't good enough there, and honestly. Prodigious, great DPS play, but more importantly, me standout play from Juko High Kingdom. What were you seeing this map that stood out to you, ladies and gentlemen? I'd like to introduce to you Juko High, the Juggernaut, absolute monster on that Reinhardt this round, as well as the round previous. Just absolutely manhandling a team all by himself. Those shatters, absolutely massive. You gotta thank your healers, of course, but you always have to credit yourself for those big tank plays. Juko, yeah, he really had. Whittle completely downloaded, dialed in. Every shatter was blocked. Every shatter came in right when they needed it. And uh, up 2-0 for Prodigious. This is not a position you want to be in if you're alt F4. But of course, a long second half to come up here considering the draw. What do you think this means for both of these teams? You know, I... I... I think Prodigious is just in a premium spot right now. I, I don't know if they, I, I honestly, I don't think, I think the next two maps are going to Prodigious. I think it's, I think it's just Prodigious the rest of the way. I really do. I don't see Alt F4 coming back from this. I, I really don't. Uh, Kingdom, what do you think? I know you got a score update, but I, I, what do you think is going to happen the rest of the way? I think Prodigious is on fire. I think Kaizen, Ben, Top, Juko High, they're just, all of them are working in such good synergy. And I think they're going to run Alt F4 out of the season. And I'll just completely run him over here. Uh, prodigious on the up up and rising. Other teams better look out.
But I do have a score update for you. A very opposite of what this match was on King's Row. Careless Pandas and DDoS, a defensive matchup as Careless Pandas win 1-0 on King's Row, making the score 2-1 Pandas are up. And right now we are about to go to halftime. So we do, uh, we're going to take a quick break here. Uh, Dor, I, I know you, you asked us, but I, what do you think is going to happen the rest of the way? Here? So this match, honestly, with tranquility, I can't say anything. I saw Careless Pandas nearly take it all the way back against Maelstrom after a miraculous halftime. They look like a completely different team. And I honestly, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised to see Alta 4 do the same, but I can't help but give it to Prodigious. They look absolutely terrifying. The neutral fights, Looking decent from both sides, but the ultimate game out of Prodigious is obscene. They don't need the ultimate advantage. They're giving it to themselves naturally by only needing to use one or two ults to close out these fights, and it's been huge. It has been huge. Uh, right now, I think we're going to go ahead and get to halftime. I'm sure the casters, I know me, we're dying for some water and drinks right now. So I need chocolate uh, milk. Yeah, we'll get this man some chocolate milk. He's got, we got, we got <laughs> All a long drink is water, so... Oh, ripping peps, yo, <laughs> ripping peps. Uh, we'll get back to you guys in just a few moments. See you soon. Welcome back, everybody, from our halftime. The score is, of course, up 2-0 for Prodigious. We all had a nice little break, got water, got chocolate milk, got what we needed. How are you feeling, Yeti? I am feeling good. It is good to be here. Lots of interesting matches going on. I know half rolling around for Kingdom there on his map, on his match watch. I don't think we had any updates going right now. Is that correct? We actually do. Uh, oh. News to me just now. Map 4, Infius, 1 over... One on Rialto, one to zero. Current score at one to three, heading into Li Zhang Tower. Infius Gaming looks to close out the match on in or on Li Zhang Tower. Big spot for uh Infius Gaming here to move into the next round to take on the undefeated commit. I think that's Go. interesting. We actually saw two really early holds out of those uh last two matches, maps from Careless Pandas, as well as the Infius versus Invictus match. Uh, those maps ending really early. Maps definitely ending really early here. Uh, it, it, I, I have to think right now, Infius is going to sweep the rest of the way. Uh, I just, I, I just like where their team's at right now. I think Invictus has just struggled way too much with a roster issues, despite having the All Star off tank in Booth. I just don't know if they have anything else they can really put in uh, that's going to really make a difference here. But we go to an escort map next, and Alt F4 with the map pick, they chose Rialto. Rialto, not a map I've actually gotten to see too often, and uh, God knows what Prodigious is going to run on it. But Alt F4, on the other hand, has the opportunity to play a few different things if they decide to play, uh, if they so decide to play meta, they can, of course, run the Ryan Zarya, that first point being a decent point for it, but the Bastion, also another option. We saw them use it to hold on top of Volskaya, I believe, on that A point and over. So I'm going to be interested to see if they decide to run something along the lines of that to maybe break up Prodigious's uh, semi brawly comps that they're running these heavy poke compositions that just want to take wide positions and force prodigious to play a lot more together definitely i think they need to make some definite changes here i don't like what they're doing right now because it's just quite frankly it's not working at all the prodigious is just i, I think they're winning at every aspect of the match right now i, I don't see a single person on out the four out playing prodigious and uh it's it's not looking good for them i made the prediction it's going to be swept the rest of the way and honestly, I, I really like the spot in Rialto for Prodigious as well. But that far is going to be able to feast on Rialto, and uh, and Alta 4 has shown no ability to counter it. Yeah, we saw Kaizen pull it out on Volsky, and all the same Rialto. Lots of big roofs to work your way around. And honestly, just a map that opens up a lot of stuff for wonkiness. Top could play that Widow. We saw him get picks on King's Row on that first point. He'd go on all sorts of crazy flank routes. Honestly, at this point, I don't know what I'm going to see out of this team. And it feels like Alta 4... It's kind of just throwing stuff at a wall and seeing what sticks. But I think what they really need to do is stick with 
stick to what they're good at and focusing on improving individual play saying, okay, maybe we pushed a little bit too far here. Maybe we weren't waiting for this old. Maybe we didn't track uh, Juco High's ultimate charge because he's getting it like nobody else on this Reinhardt. And uh, I think there's just some personal play they can clean up and they don't really need a full team comp change. And that looks to be what they're looking for. And I don't think it's necessarily the answer. And one thing I will say for Alta 4 right now is one of their DPS has been out most of the night tonight, and that is Kogarashi, who has looked very strong uh, throughout the season. He's the former captain of a team who was initially part of the community but had to leave prior to the season. Uh, former captain of Majesty Ruby, his name's Kogarashi, has played really well on that DPS. And right now, here he comes in. He's come in for Daft. It could be a big play here for Alta 4 getting Koga in. Okay, hear me out. I saw the exact same play out of Careless Pandas. Careless Pandas, of course, playing up against Illusion at the time about two to three weeks ago. They got stomped in the entirety of the first half, and they looked completely clueless as to what was going on. Second half, their sub comes in, finally joins the game, completely unwarmed up, and everything turned around in their favor. And honestly, I want to see it again. That was one of the most entertaining matches I've gotten to see in my entire life. And honestly... If uh, if Kogarashi can turn this one around, that would be absolutely incredible. It would be. It absolutely would be. And right now, both teams just finishing getting ready here. I'm sure Kogarashi is still loading in here, just waiting for the confirmation to move to Rialto. And here we go. We're asking for readies. And, of course, Jukahai responding with, I am big R. And honestly, that has been kind of the story of this entire match for Jukahai. Jukahai has just been big. It's mostly the big left click, if I'm being perfectly honest with you, followed by a big shatter and then more <laughs> big left clicks. So it's Juco High, the definite MVP standing out for me right now, uh, just just dominating the tank battle. It'd be interesting to see what kind of changes come up here for Alt F4. Right now we have people loading into the match. It looks like we're having some additional technical issues, which is uh, promising, promising, uh, promising for a uh, Tranquility broadcast. So, and here we go. Oh, we're in skirmish, and we're in the match. Uh, these teams may be showing a little bit of what they wanted to run. Of course, the classic uh, custom lobby, you know, show or show them exactly what you're not going to run when it's in skirmish mode. But we'll see if either of these teams decide to run anything a little bit different with, than what they locked there. I would have to imagine we will. It looks like, are we still having... Nope, nope, never mind. That's a, per, that's a spectator. So people are loading in right now. I'd be, I'd be curious to see what people come out with here. We've seen Prodigious do a lot of different things here on the uh, on different comps and everything. And same with uh, Alt F4. They've kind of been riding a similar similar style the whole way. We see the double shield from Alt F4. All right, and locking it in will be Chrono Angel on the Diva. I Perfectly countering this. Bastion's going to give him a lot of opportunities to move in. And Top's going to be looking for picks on the backside. If he can find a good flank route and really just take ter take care of Kogarashi, deny him that mm -hmm. air space uh, that he's going to be looking for. And honestly, if if he allows Kogarashi to have the air space on this Widow, I think Kogarashi's going to start to build a little bit of a lead for Alta 4. Maybe get their mental a little bit more reset. Of course, bringing in a new player can oftentimes just be what you need to reset that mental and uh, do it. But of course, if Kogarashi starts popping off, the entirety of the team will rally around him. We saw it last night with NPC coming in uh, clutch for Jetpack Cats, but oh, immediately top taking out Kogarashi and making a real statement, your new player does not matter. Wow, it's a big play there from Kogarashi, or a big play there from top by the Kogarashi. Uh, the res is already burned by going to be a few minutes before that comes or a few seconds before that comes back online i wouldn't mind a few minutes for this cooldown that'd be fine with <laughs> that'd be fine with me too i think that's a fair fair reasonable thing Sebastian not quite displaced off the high ground yet kogarashi looking for something and crash will be taken out top with that widowmaker out of the fight kogarashi now has free reign he's gonna start pushing up with this may it's raining and icicles on him and it's gonna be hard to get over top of prodigious here it's worth noting, Prodigious continued to get that card push in. Koga's trying to put a lot of damage from above here, uh, but I, I do like where O-Stories is at. He's well, he's got a great, great angle on them, but Prodigious actually doing a really good job of just kind of negating a lot of the damage. I love this positioning coming out from Alta 4. They're barely contesting this card, and O-Stories has just enough of an angle. He's going to have to shred through this Maywall, which doesn't have time, but it doesn't matter because he's found out. He gets frozen and immediately picked 
off. No res. It's gonna be available for Gordon for Dujour. Does go for it, and he will find the res. That's, that's pretty big here. Ostrovies will be up. He gets to reposition on the high ground. But all of a sudden, the Maywall is up yet again to wall him off, and he will be dishing out damage. Shuko high dropping extra low. But he'll right back up as Ostro is taken out of that aggressive position. Good play there from uh, Perdidish, just playing nice, patient Overwatch right now, dealing with the bunker extremely effectively, and honestly, Alt F4 needed to do a better job of supporting their Bastion. The Bastion got left out in the cold, and they needed to play a little bit tighter in order to keep them uh, keep that pressure up. And Kogarashi, or I'm sorry, uh, it just had kind of free reign on that Ash with Top, and Top again, another pick. And Jukohai showing us there's not only the Reinhardt that we have to look out for. This Orisa has been perfectly fine. As well as Chrono Angel's Diva. Pretty large there. Oh, and the Blizzard is committed. They're looking for more here. They want to push two corners. They're going to hit the pick on Osher if they can take down this invulnerability field. And it will be in the backline. Kogarashi taking out bottom, but it's not going to be enough. The cart continues to push. The Bastion ult committed, and he kills himself. Oh, no. Oh, May. oh my goodness. The outplay of the Sentry. <laughs> Guys, and maybe getting a bit more value out of that ice block than he thought he would initially, but you know, he's not complaining about it. The Bob committed to the fight. They get the push, get another corner, as well as the Diva Bomb. Gonna be forcing Alt F4 further and further back. The Coalesce is committed as well, but all of a sudden, uh, Prodigious are gonna be completely out of ultimates, and the window will come up for Alt F4. Looking to trade back, looking to hold on to this corner. Crash does have the Gravitic Flux up, and they have a great opportunity to hold right here. What a grindy fight from Prodigious, and they continued to move that cart. It's crazy to see what they're doing right now. Kaizen in the back line on a Genji now. It may have been in response to Ostori swapping on a Widow. They may have seen it just in time. And right when Kaizen goes down, it's a perfect time for him to swap onto a perfect oh. counter. But it doesn't matter because the Bob is what's going to be countering all oh. of that before you're dishing out so much damage. Bob! Bob play of the game, finding Bob! four. Bob Overwatch, everyone. Oh, my goodness, buddy. Bob with the 4K. <laughs> what a great play there from top getting the Bob into the fight. Really good job for Prodigious. They're continuing to win these long, crazy fights. Alt F4 needs to get way more aggressive here and try to take away some of the space. They're just letting Prodigious win these long poke wars. You know what, Skate Free? I, I've just started to realize. When you don't throw Bob off the map, he gets a little bit of value. He gets definitely more value than me thrown off the map, without question. I can't argue with that. I can't argue with that at all. Alright, pushing up this hill is going to be proving to be a difficult tax. Playing the bottom of it, Kaizen already forcing out the res from his own teammate getting picked off on the Genji. Ostroy has a great angle here to find some picks, but Kaizen going in on the Genji. Ostroy is taking a lot of damage. The invulnerability field forced out and immediately going down. Whittle though, his shield used. He's forced to play close to the cart. He does not want to be where he is. It will be Prodigious looking to collapse on him, but they're going to collapse onto the Reaper. First from, I believe, Ostroy. Or no, Kogarashi will be on the Reaper. And Kaizen immediately engaging with the blade when they're forced to back up, but the Bongo oh, will be enough no. to take him out of the fight. And Kogarashi trading. Right back onto him, Juko High, the main tank, down oh. for This looks like a great hold for all What a boulder from Crash. Takes Ben out as he's trying to get out of the fight. Just continuing to stagger out Prodigious here. They're going to burn a lot of time off the clock as it looks like Chrono Angel decides to do it their own way. Uh, taking it right into the drink. What do you think uh, Prodigious need to do? Because all of a sudden, that's looking pretty good for Alta 4. They have a decent percentage of their ultimates built up. It's looking like maybe the Bob could break this point. But other than that, this is a they, perfect position for them. Oh, does it matter? Long they made range, the, they, rat. they made the change they needed to make. Bring in that junk rat. Alta 4 has struggled with their support line right now. And Prodigious is just in control with that junk rat. And it looks like Kaizen with another aggressive angle. Won't be able to play the same off angles that he got to, but if the damage can be the same in Kogarashi, looking for a oh, Death Blossom on the no. side, not be finding anything. Death Blossoming into six people. A little ambitious there, but the Gravitic Flux, looking close to one out, finds it, and nobody. Oh my goodness, that's huge if you're Prodigious getting out of that one. But the Maywall will be cutting off half of Prodigious, but it doesn't matter because he just walks right back around the wall. Kaizen finding so much value on Ostro, he's taking out that man that could start his part for a long time. Widow will be forced out of his Fortify and taken down immediately. Hybrid not able to keep the heals up. Kaizen pushing him further and further back. And Kogarashi just re-engaging on this cart at this point. Oh They're goodness. just looking for time bank. Oh my goodness. Co Pro Prodigious is just controlling this. Alt F4 got no value out of three straight ultimates. Oh There's my gosh. Kaizen, Kaizen's just holding his drunk, his rip tire in the corner. He doesn't even have to use it. It's terrifying. It comes in and it finds hybrid. I don't know what Alt F4 could possibly do here to turn this around. It's just slow, but actually that's exactly what they needed to do. Check out Ben. They lost their big burst heals. It's, if they can't, if Alt F4 can pull this out, if they're going to have to try to get bottom out. Right now, they haven't been able to. 
game. It is another grindy fight, but Whittle will be finding the kill to stay alive just long enough with the heals from Hybrid and Guava du Jour. He looks for a flank guard. He's gonna be trying, looking to find a hook on a Chrono Angel. Looking to D-mech him. The D-Matrix is used. The Fortify is out from the Orisa. They force further and further back on this point. The spawn advantage all in favor of Alt F4, and they hold on to it a little bit longer this map. Oh no. Still a big hope for them and more staggers for Alta 4. Pro they just needed to let that one go sooner. They gave up, they hold, held on way too long. They tried to draw that out as long as they possibly could and they probably lost a minute of time that they would have had if they did a reset earlier. I don't like that play from Prodigious, but nonetheless, they're still in a dominating position here. They only have a little bit to push and they do have the big B.O.B. Bob coming in from top again. I think one of the biggest questions here is how quickly O Stories can get this Blizzard up. This Blizzard can absolutely close this fight. But Chrono Angel, of course, looking out to D Matrix that he knows is coming up. They didn't use it in that hold. And the bomb used to engage the fight. Hyper's gonna be forced out of position here, but Kogarashi taking pick on the bottom as Will goes down. Next, O Stories and all the kills in the feed are red. This cart continues for but three members still left alive. It's not over yet for Alta 4. The longer they hold this, the more it's in their favor. Chrono Angel looking for something. That May Ultimate only at 87%. He got picked off so early, but the whole hog will be coming in just in time as well. The D-Matrix drops low for Chrono Angel. It's used in uh, in tandem with the window, but Widow looking to get picked up in a massive wall from Ostroids is going to be blocking that bomb, denying it of any value. Widow, Widow looking to use his whole hog to zone him off the point, forcing the shield down bottom, dropping extra low. But the Riptire is used, but is it enough? Is it going to be in time? As the pick's starting to go in all top four's way, it doesn't matter. One for one, they'll take this all top four. Then close one off. Out. Oh, Hybrid barely not getting his invulnerability field down in time as a massive slam from Crash lands oh, so much Whittle. damage onto the supports. And it's overtime, ticking down as Kaizen needs to close out the point and needs to come in clutch with the drunk guy. Looking like he's not going to be able to do it. No, he did not, and Whittle saved that one. As much as he struggled in the Reinhardt battle, the second he got onto that, uh, the second he got onto that off tank, suddenly he's in control. He's able to get this back in favor of Alt F4, and it looks like uh, Prodidus will come just short on Rialto. Now, Rialto's last point getting held in those doors, it can be notoriously difficult to get past it, but honestly, I have to give all the props in the world to Alta 4 there. They took so much time off the clock on that last point, and they played it so well. They disengaged when they need to, they knew they could give up corners at certain points in the fight, and they absorbed ultimates and then re-engaged so smartly, using those doors to maximum effect and got so much value out of their abilities by using them maybe less so in the ways that prodigious was using their ultimates in the last few games that we've seen but more so using them smartly to deny space and split fights up so they can find picks elsewhere absolutely and kingdom you got some updates for us i do and man is this one heck of an update infius cutting off invictus ending their season legion tower 02 final score 4-1 infius uh cutting or excuse me infius moving on to the next round of the playoffs as well as for the uh ddos versus careless pandas match ddos takes the gibraltar map three to two and the overall score is two to two going into map five impressive ddos careless pandas looks to be the barn burner we expected Special thanks to Invictus on a great season to this point. And Infius, congratulations on going to the next round. Your reward for winning your playoff game, it's just commit. That's terrifying. Yep. That's, that's, nice. That is quite the reward there, everyone. I, I honestly would rather be Invictus right now. <laughs> I have a lot of questions. They get, drink, they get to drink as much chocolate milk as they want. They don't have to worry about matches. And also an Infius has to worry about commit, and that's a scary position. But honestly, it's just as scary here coming in for Alta 4. They gotta push this map and they gotta push it all the way through. Prodidus is in a really good spot, that's I think, right start. now. The hot hook on the Chrono Angel will be enough. He gets left, he gets halted, he gets through, and he goes down just in time. Kogarashi picking off the finishing blow on that kill, but bottom will find the res onto him. He's not in a great position. The hot Hulk looking to go down, he's purple. The Hulk lands. Look, we're gonna follow it up. The shield down, Chrono Angel dropping so low and all that for just demanding space on this point. Pro did just did a great job there. It's just slowly backing up, letting all that four have a little bit of space and then taking the fight back to them. But I speak too soon. Every kill matters here in that uh, Arisa on Juko High is gonna take so long to get back on this point. Bottom does not have his res up for another 10 seconds or so. I don't think we're gonna see the Sharissa come back anytime soon, and, and I think Alt F4 just needs to take full advantage of this. Without question, I do think that Alt F4 are, are in a pretty good position, but they're not getting aggressive. They're not at all getting aggressive. And I nice. to take this space. 
Uh, they do get top back up after the res. Uh, and the here comes Bob. The Bob slumped oh. immediately by Hybrid. Hybrid running that Ana that he's so well known for. Before he played more, he was playing this hero. And he was so well effective on it. We haven't seen him miss a sleep yet, I believe. As Chrono Angel dropping immediately down. Gets a massive purple onto him. That Roadhog taken out of the fight so quickly. The Widow has the off angle that he wants. Takes the far right out of the sky. Top looking for the 1v1, but it doesn't matter. Oh, stories. Man of the fight here. Taking out everyone in his path. Close range, long range does not matter. Uh, o story is in a fantastic job there. He popped the sights. He got two. He got a two K, and it was pretty much all she wrote for Perditus at that point. But Kogarashi is getting maybe a little aggressive. Perditus not quite able to capitalize. Oh, a huge hook from Widow, but he's able to get out of there. Barely getting out Chrono Angel with his life, but we do see an ultimate advantage in favor of Prodigious. How do you think they need to hold it here in order to get a favorable position going into the next fights as well? Proditus right now is in a pretty good spot, I think. Uh, I do like the switch over to the Diva because they will get rid of the Halt hook that's been troubling again, that's been troubling them. Colonel Angel, he does eat another hook, but he's able to get out quickly. All right, the engagement goes in. Kaizen finding and getting the better O stories and Guava du Jour. No way to make it to take him out of the sky. The hook out of commission. It's looking like this one's going to get cleaned up for Prodigious. We see tons of damage raining in from top at range. Crash taken down from top and Whittle taken down by top. O story is taken low and Kaizen takes him down as well. Prodigious DPS, just too strong right now. I honestly feel like you just put him on carry heroes right now and just let him take the game for you right now. Uh, pardon me. Juko High is playing, I mean, good enough. The main tank has been great. His disengages have been perfect. He's buying enough time for Kaizen to get these picks and. Honestly, this looks really uncrackable from Prodigious. Yeah, Prodigious is in a premium spot. I love the comp they have. I love what they're doing. They're taking that Roadhog out of the oh. game and top, top establishing superiority right now. Great hook and great halt and just really good play right now from Prodigious. Yeah, top establishing dominance, if you will. Setting himself up with the Widow duel, finding that victory as Ostory swaps onto the Hanzo. Looking to win it in a little bit of a different direction, but it doesn't matter because Kaizen's going to take him out. The other DPS from Prodigious showing he can do it too. Definitely looking real good right now. I Prodigious DPS are just so strong. We do see Ostory switching over to the app, eating the Widow 1v1. I, I do like the switch from Ostories, but he's got to be careful. He can't. He's got to play those off angles aggressively, try to get some big dynamite onto Prodigious here. Gonna be up to where the dynamite comes in. It's gonna be finding one immediately onto top. He's gonna be dashing out, looking to get a little bit more value, but everybody's running away from him, trying to find the Mara. One slash, two slash, trying to find one more, and he will onto Ben as this fight looks to go in the favor of Alt F4. But Pro Prodidus isn't done yet. Kaizen picks up two with the big alt, and Whittle does take down Kaizen after that. But Prodidus is in a good position here to get a soft reset and be. Oh, what a oh, pick! Big pick. What I a pick like from that. Whittle. I don't like that positioning from Prodigious. They were in full position to get caught out by a halt hook, and immediately they did. No halt required. Chrono Angel looking to go down on this mini diva. Will he get around the corner? There is a shield. Saves him from Juko High. Will it be enough? The dynamite goes over top. The heals starting to come in from him. He runs away from his healers. Oh. Does he go down? Just barely. No, he does not. They're going to have to look to hold this one further back to McCree, though. Top looking for an off angle. He looks for the flash. He's on top of the cart. He finds four. He flashes onto Whittle. So that tank gonna be staying alive for so long. The sound barrier dropped. Crash looking for something onto Jukai, but Whittle absolutely running face first into Jukai, regrouping on the cart. The Diva looks for something. Top finding a kill onto Ostrois. Could be huge here, taking out a lot of that damage. That dynamite no longer a threat though. Whittle still alive on the throttle. Can dish out massive amounts of damage. Both these tanks still alive, but it doesn't matter because their back lines are dying left and right. Prodigious, hold on to this B point a little longer. Alt F4 didn't get a good reset in there, unfortunately. Could have reset a touch earlier. Alt F4 is now in their last fight. Kaizen has the barrage. You need to see huge plays. They have three hit scans on the side of Alt F4 right now, trying to stop Kaizen. They have to stop that barrage. And there we go. Oh, As yeah, if on. <laughs> oh, oh, but Kogarashi misses the. Oh, he misses the res. He could have used his flashbang to stop the res, but instead he looked for a cheeky little play, play and it didn't work. That could very easily cost them this point. Oh, Kaizen's coming in. He's sneaking his way around. He's playing inside. He's playing so he's patiently. There. He's waiting for the bomb comes in. Kaizen's going to look to engage on the back line here as they just hold on to these stairs for as long as they can. Kaizen, though, taking a little bit more of the main round, just wants to dish as much damage into this back line of Alt F4 as he can, but it doesn't matter because top will be taking out the bomb. That oh! A little bit will. Fighting a massive kill on the top. 
put the rest coming in. Chrono Angel will be taking out Crash and all the kills in the way of prodigious 18 seconds on the clock. This one's ticking down. They're gonna need something huge here. They're looking for soft reset. Whittle looks for something. He finds the hook on the bend, but Guava Gujur taking Kaisen out of the sky. This could be the opportunity they need. Whittle just needs to wait for his take a breather to get right back up, and he will be right back on to Chrono Angel. The damage starting to come out, but the demon bomb could be bomb. close out the point. He takes the breather right on top of the cart, but the picks all going in the way of Ultimate Four just in time, no less. Wow, they barely survived that diva bomb on the side of Alta 4. Prodigious looks to be in their death throes on this point. They still have two, one and a half minutes now to take the last point for Alta 4. But dire straits for Alta 4. They need to come up big on the next team fight here. They do have two ults to do just that. Prodigious, no ults. They do have that dead eye coming up though. Maybe look for them, maybe not. No chance of a draw on this map. Either they get it down or they don't, and that's not the start they wanted. Whittle taken out by that Junkrat. Out of Kaizen, and I think we're going to see it come to even more effect on the defense than we saw for it on the, the attack. Kaizen picks off Koga. That's brutal. Definitely last fight now for Alt F4. They're not going to have more than one shot at this. And they might be able to get a ball back onto this point, but the ultimate advantage in their favor. This is their chance. If they had one, if they want to hold on to this series, if they don't want to let this one go to match point, they need to do it here. They're going to look to start this fight. Not too aggressively, actually. Not too aggressively at all. Alt F4 needs to get a little bit more aggressive here. I, I guess they were trying oh, to wait for an ult. Nano onto the hog. Whittle looking to use his whole hog to full effect. He finds one. He's looking into the back line. Top forced all the way back with the Riptar. Lance, he's looking for Guava, and he does find him. The Deadeye does find Kokorashi on the cart, and it's looking for three members left alive on Alt F4. They're holding on to this for dear life. They need these picks to come in. Bottom is completely on fire, but the cart is completely left alone. They have 15 seconds to get back on top of this. They will have time to reset here. They are very slowly getting everything back together. They don't have any ults, though, for this Regan test. Juko High has the uh, the bongos. That could be enough here with that supercharger to just shut down Alt F4. Oh, the Junkrat coming in. Kogarashi over top. They have no clue. He's dishing out damage. He's going to flash bang. He does not get taken out, and all the kills in the way of Prodigious taking out the front line. The dive completely unsuccessful. This is not where you want to be if you're Alt F4. Prodigious take it to map point. Prodigious takes another one. They're up 3-0 in this match. My goodness, folks, it has been exciting to say the least here. Uh, Kingdom, I know you're about to leave, but you got one last, you have another update for us on the DDoS uh, one? I do, I have one last update before I head on out, and that is uh, DDoS takes the 3-2 map victory on Nepal, or excuse me, the 2-0 uh, victory on Nepal, making this a 3-2 matchup going into map six. DDoS and Careless Pandas looking to have a very interesting end here. But with that being said, we bid Kingdom adieu and we welcome in our very own Iris podcast host, Specs. Welcome, Specs. Oh, thanks for having me, Yeti. Really appreciate it here. <laughs> Specs, I don't know how much you've had a chance to tune in, uh, but what are you thinking of this map? Prodigious up 3 0. I am shocked. Absolutely I know you are shocked. You said this um, was going to be a 4 0 on the on the podcast in the favor of Alt F4. I think you are wrong, sir. Uh, oof, wouldn't be the first time I was wrong today. Uh, <laughs> a lot of things going on with that one. But uh, yeah, no, Pro Prodigious look great. Their DPS line is looking absolutely incredible. Um, the, the support from Ben and Bottom have been absolute top notch and uh, definitely helping them take the W here so far. Definitely. Uh, looks like we're going to have a couple minutes here. Uh, I would love to hear from you more, Specs. If you you got two other matches going right now, another match you predicted going the opposite way, four one in favor of Invictus. Uh, no, it did not. Yeah, yeah, Infius. Uh, just continuing to surprise me here. Um, I'll I'll throw the record out there right now. I am zero and three on predictions so far. So it's fine. <laughs> it's great. I'm doing a fantastic job today. But um, you know, uh, very surprised with what the teams are overall doing um coming together at the end of the season here where it really matters yeah prodigious honestly is completely impressed me today looking at the record looking at the stuff we didn't really have the vods we didn't have uh the stuff because they never played on stream we didn't get to see anything but their record and what teams really thought of them but to see them come out swinging like this on so many ridiculous comps kaizen on the junk rat looking like an absolute monster is uh it's honestly really impressive if you ask me and i think maybe coming in without uh the vods so to speak may have just played out to Prodigious's advantage. I have to say, I think Prodigious is just, they're just outplaying just on every level. 
at every level. It's not even close. We're not seeing just a meta thing happening here. And uh, I, I really like what we're seeing here uh, from Alta 4. They just look so good. Or, I'm sorry, from uh, Prodigious. They're just looking so good. Uh, it, it's hard to argue with where they're at right now. What do you think Alta 4 can possibly do to clean up the play at least enough to make this a close Helios? They need to. They need to play. They need to play their comps more effectively. They're playing the right comps in the right situation, but they're not playing them the way they're supposed to be. They're playing double shield extremely slow. That's a mistake. They're letting all this poke just destroy them. Their Reinhardt is just overwhelming them, and it's just been too much. And they haven't made adjustments to keep Juco high from destroying them. And that last map wasn't as much a Juco high map as much as a Kaizen and top map. But I, I do like some of the things here uh, for Whittle. And uh, uh, I do like what I just saw with Whittle on the off tank. I think that was a nice choice. Seeing O stories uh, back onto the main tank as well. I, I think that's all very good. Uh, Kogarashi looks really good on that DPS. But, but Alt F4 needs to play around their comps a little bit better. Because right now they just aren't. I think one of the biggest things we'll see coming in is Elios match. We saw uh, Alt F4 comboing Halt Hook very effectively that match, actually. And I think if we can look to see maybe those uh, easy bait combos, if you will, uh, if we can see more of those out of Alt F4, this is a great map to take advantage of it. Definitely, definitely, definitely. I would agree with that. Um, it's Alt F4 needs to pull off the big old reverse sweep, though, and that's just going to be hard. It's not just a, th a 2 0 to come back from, it's a 3 0. I mean, Prodigious is in just a premium position to close this puppy out right now. And we're about to get this thing underway. I think reverse sweep or not, this is not the way you want to go out if you're Alt F4. They're looking for something. If anything else, they're playing for pride here. They need to take a map off Prodigious. Even one matters. Even just one map is all that matters at this point. You know, we saw that great success in the preseason tournament, taking that thing down. And it looks like their playoff run just might come to an end here really before it even got going. All they've been able to get out is a draw as players are looks like filtering in here. There's a couple players struggling to get in. And there's a lottery reset. And here we go. All right, coming in. Lots of cool stuff we can see on Elias Bell here. Of course, lots of Lucio and Roadhog play. And I would not doubt for a second that we'll see Kaizen back on the far as well as Kogarashi. And I mean, God knows the widows come out when the far has come out, it seems, with these two teams. So uh, lots of interesting 1v1 DPS play to be had, but I have a gut feeling that Alta 4 is going to try something wacky here. Alta 4 definitely needs to make some changes here. Um, I, I just don't know what they can do. I really don't. Like I, I'm, I'm honestly kind of, I'm honestly kind of, uh, I'm kind of blown away by it right now. I don't know what they can do. I really don't. I think they're just done. I think Alt F4, I think stick a fork in them. It's going to be 2 0 here, and Alt F4 just force close on the season. And Prodigious not done with the wonky comps. Chuko high on a Roadhog and Chrono Angel on a hamster ball with the uh, Ana that might not get the peel that she wants, but who knows? It's Prodigious. They've been pulling these comps out all night and making them work. So I can't wait to see what they do with this one and a lot more of a meta comp coming out from Alt F4. And we've seen it work for them with some success before, and I think a lot of it is going to come down to Kogarashi and how well he can play the Doomfist. Definitely. Kogarashi needs to make the oh, big no. change. Oh, no. Oh, no. Chrono damage. He's looking for it. He looks right. He flies three. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. No, he sets up perfectly, and they walk right into the trap. Wow. Wow. Chrono Angel, the other tank on the side of Prodigious, just, just dominant there. Um, just one play. One play, it's over, and he almost has his minds. Alta 4 had every advantage they wanted in the world going into that fight, and all of a sudden they needed to retake a difficult position. Look at this and comp! I, I don't know how to explain Prodigious. I can't explain it! And Alta 4 can't figure it out either! It just oh. works. Oh That's no, Koga Kogarashi, oh no! Uh, in the back line, and Alta 4 is completely split apart! They're spread completely across this map, and this is exactly what Prodigious wants. That perfect 1v1 here is Jukahai on the Roadhog! Everybody just wants 1v1s. And Kawaba de Jour is just spinning in the well right now. He finally got out after spinning there for about 20 seconds. He got pulled really far down. And actually, 
It may have been Tech, it may have been on accident, but I saw Jukai hit the hook and then walk forward after he hooked, which effectively body blocked him so he fell further down into the hole. Yes, it was a really good play there from Juko High, but Guava de Jour, the Lucio expert, trying to stay alive, just barely does so. All right, ultimates coming up for both sides. And surprisingly, Igor, oh my gosh, top. Going, uh, going to get halted there out of his Sombra, is swapping onto that. A little bit more of an interesting pick is... They're just... Prodigious is just playing directly on top of them. They're looking to split them up. They're looking to brawl here. And brawl they will! Whittle taking out Kai's and O-Stories, though, will be trading back on a Chrono Angel. That Reaper's such a good counter into the ball. And they look to take this point. Slow and steady. But Juko High gonna be taking a Nano. Looks like it has something to say about it, but the support's eating a Coalescence for themselves. Juko High getting punched out. A massive punch from Kogarashi will be denying him any value out of that hook. And Alt F4 only used two alts to retake that point, most likely here. Uh, Chrono Angel tries to draw it out on the D on the ball, but it looks... Well, I may have spoke too soon. Oh, there it is, right there. Nope, I missed. I, I'm just, you know, I'm good. I'm done. I'm not going to predict it anymore. I feel like Prodigious isn't playing to win fights, or even the game. They're just playing to, like, get kills every once in a while. Yeah, it, it seems... It, if the point's in your favor, that's all you got to do, you know? Mm -hmm. They're playing for the Reddit plays, which is really why we... Let's be real with us here, guys. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, no. It is. oh no. Is oh, it no. gonna happen? Jukahai's back. Jukahai. Oh, we have a Reinhardt. Hide, in the your, lobby. hide your kids. Hide Alt your wife. Alt F4 is trembling in their boots right now. They have no clue where this hamster ball is. All they want to do is not get booped into this hole. As Jukahai showing himself on the left side of the point. The EMP comes in. The swing in from Chrono Angel will not find anybody knocking into the point. And a purple onto hybrid, not gonna be enough here as the fight is going on all over the place. But Alt F4, first people to make up their minds, gonna be collapsing onto Juco High on the left side of the point here. Guava de Jour made the play of the match or the map right there for Alt F4, staying just out of the line of sight of that Sombra, getting that alt off there. That's what won them that fight without question the right play, the timely play for Guava de Jour. All of a sudden, though, Kaizen has the death boss and he's looking scary. And I think the key to winning this match here for Alt F4 is going to be sticking together. If you can just play clean overwatch, you don't need to make plays right now against this comp. The comp out of Prodigious will make all the mistakes on their own. They're look, playing a really aggressive style and playing really greedy, wow. but it doesn't matter. Ostor is going to be playing greedy himself. The Death Blossom drops in onto Ben and Crash following it up with uh, the Grid Flux to start it out. Pardon me. Great uh, play. Great play from Ostories there. Great play from Ostories. I think if Alt F4 keep playing like this, if they just... All you need to do, if Prodigious is playing comp like this, you just need to play clean. You need to target call effectively, you need to get all six players on one person. We saw it happen on the Juco High when they tried to split the point, and we saw there they got to uh, push effectively on the back line and ignore everything that the uh, off tank of Chrono Angel was doing. We see a battle of copy passes in the chat, just as strong as the battle on the map. Right now, there's the big ult from Kaizen. Oh, and another big one out of Juko High. He's not done for tonight. He finds two with another shatter and another fight closed out by Prodigious. They're looking to take this one to map point for themselves. Wow. Hey, if you'd like to get all if you like to get four road in a playoff match, press Alt F4. That's kind of what I'm feeling right now for four. They're not looking good. Prodigious played it right. They had 99-0. They just needed to play it slow, wait for the right opportunity, and that's what they did. Can we can we just appreciate Juko High got one shatter, Juko High got one shatter, and it won on the mat. Like this man's Reinhardt looks unstoppable right now, and I would be scared to be honestly. Go, I mean, you're going into commit, which is you know scary in and of itself. However, uh, Juko High looks looks pretty spicy. Juko High back on that Reinhardt is basically all they seem to need, and Alt F4 can do nothing about it. It's just dominant right now, absolute dominance from Prodigious, and they look to close it out here on map uh, on uh, Ilios Lighthouse. I honestly give this map a total advantage to Prodigious. Kaizen on this Junkrat has so many opportunities, so many chokes, it's so true. many off angles. He can play to get damage in, but it, it's going to be top, though, finding the first pick on O Stories as the point control looks to go over to Prodigious, but they're not done fighting yet. Jukahai holding his shield up strong. Chrono Angel getting just enough time with that shield to kill off Kogarashi in this point. Flips over in favor. Oh no, Juko High is not done. He gives him the ski free special, charging all the way into the back line. Crash and Whittle will be the next members to go down with their healers spread away from them. 
Both of four just struggled there with target focus. They struggled with getting their team healed through Top's damage. We see Ben already has a Coalescence quicker than Hybrid. We see Top right now sitting close to his ult. We see Juko High getting closer to his ult. Prodigious is just a premium spot here to close out the 4-0 and head to the next round. All right, playing very fast, playing very aggressive. Will be all too far, looking at him fast. Juko High finds nothing for a sh on a shatter for the first time all night. He's gonna be looking to find a little bit more value. They have to disengage that Ryan Shatter. Not gonna be enough to win him this one. They just they did disengage well. Oh, that be enough. Great pick on the Whittle, playing a little too aggressive on that Orisa. And right now, it looks like Alt F4 is going to need a hard reset again. I, I honestly, I feel like there's not much you can do about this right now. The ultimate advantage, not too far in favor of Prodigious, but we see Kaizen coming up on that rip tire. Alt F4 have proven time and time again that they are just terrified of this. This ultimate makes them so scared, but... Their own Gravitic Flux will be the first thing to come up, but he just keeps the tire on point, keeps it for the pressure. He goes in, he's looking for Kokorashi, he's looking for something that blows up and doesn't find anybody, but O-Story is taking out Kaizen in the meantime. Top, though, with the Death Blossom of the day, we'll be finding two picks, Hybrid with the Coalition, so trading right back onto the Reaper of Prodigious. This fight, dead even, Widow looking for a pick onto Chrono. They need to get the Zarya dead, they need to take that damage out of the fight. Juko Hydro swinging like a madman onto... Whittle all the healing onto the main tank of Alta 4. They need to find a pick and they need to find it now. Kaizen rolling right back in on this Junkrat. Gonna start dishing out the damage, but Kogarashi has something to say about it. And the grab lands onto three, four members of Alta 4. And Prodigious close out this fight. Prodigious just in dominant control. Alta 4, they have to get Guava, or have to get Guava back up and back onto the point. I don't know if they can in time, but O-Stories did get Kaizen. O-Stories tries to draw it out on point and he will be able to get it to OT. Barely gonna be enough, and you don't want to see a Reaper go down in a time like that. They need to rush to that point a little bit faster, but it doesn't matter. Juko High is going in like a madman, fans the pin onto the pick, but Whittle swinging in on the ball. He needs to find something. Maybe a massive boot play could be enough for them here, but it's gonna be a difficult one. Guava de Jour running around this point like Madman needs to get onto the point in time, and it looks like he's not gonna touch, and it's not enough. Two members off the point for Alta 4. Prodigious take the series 4 0. Prodigious, a dominant performance tonight. 4-0 over Alt F4, looking very, very strong. Going into the next round, they take on the number two seed Meteors in the next round next week. Should be a heck of a match. Prodigious, looking the best they've looked all season. Now we had a really exciting match tonight. All sorts of wacky stuff run by Prodigious, and of course some really impressive play out of the DPS players, as well as Juka High. Uh, and his support team. But of course, there's a lot of stuff that went on in this match. Specs, is there anything specifically that you want to break down on that Elios map? How did that work? How did that work? <laughs> Some wacky I, comps there, but for, I mean, Prodigious made it work. No Prodigious clue. just making the right plays at the right time. And it's just, it's, it's just incredible play. I, 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 I have to say, it's just. It prodigious just outplayed on an individual level. And I think that's the key thing is the play from Kaizen, the play from top and just every individual on that team played their role to perfection. And maybe it's not the meta role, but it's the right role. And it worked. They'll have a tougher time against meteors next week without question, but prodigious looking better than they've looked all season without, without a doubt. And not to mention, they're, in their past seven matches, they've had, I believe, three buys, and the rest of them were all losses. It's been seven weeks since these guys have seen that victory screen, and I'm sure it feels good for them. It's going to give them a lot of mental momentum going into the next match. Definitely. You have to assume it's going to take, uh, it gives them a lot of momentum going into the next match here. Uh, right now, we're keeping a close eye on the match that's going right now, because uh, it looks like there's a chance they're going to go to a map 7, and if that's the case, I think we're going to try to take the cast over there and just pick up the map 7 here. Um, let me just see where they're at here. That I did just get confirmation. They are in map 7, and I'm just trying to verify if it's starting or not. Oh, please don't be starting. I, this is one I've been dying to see Careless Pandas. Kind of my pick for the Dark Horse going into the Harmony tier, and I'd love to see these teams slug it out like they've been all night. And I definitely would love to see this, but we're right now just trying to verify if the match map is in process or not. And as soon as we know that, we will let you guys know. Specs, what do you think of the other match here, Inf Infius and Invictus here? What stands out with Infius's improvement throughout the season to you? 
I, I think the fact that they, they didn't make a ton of roster changes. I, mm-hmm. I, I really think that's what got prodigiously in the win at the end of the day here as well. Um, just, just being consistent and, and keeping that roster similar, um, you know, really banding together, figuring out what they're good at, you know, even though it isn't meta and then, uh, you know, making that happen. Absolutely. Uh, that's, it's just, they're playing the right heroes at the right time. And yes, we do have confirmation. The DDoS and all their uh, Carol's pandas match is ongoing in map oh. seven. Uh, I think we'll take a quick break. So Cav can, uh, we can get everything set up in the other match, uh, come back in just a few moments and we will be back uh, shortly. All right, and we're back in the lobby with Careless Pandas versus DDoS, looking like the slugfest of the night. These teams going three and three, neck and neck. Careless Pandas taking that last map two to one, looking to take this one to the last map. I believe it will be Rialto we're getting into here. Tons of exciting stuff, and I wish I could have seen how this game was going earlier, but uh, Ski Free, any thoughts on how this one's going to go, having not seen the maps beforehand? You know, I look at the teams right now. The thing that sticks out to me is I don't see a Yeti on the side of Pandas. I don't know if that's related to some sort of uh, illness or maybe maybe they just like what they have with uh, Nebby on that tank roll. That very easily could be the case. Nebby and Infinity. Um, I, I'm not 100% sure what we'll see here, but I, I have to say, you know, DDoS to me the, with that with that DPS line is still going to be hell of a So we will see what happens. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things that actually I see, you mentioned that Yeti was out, but honestly, uh, the last time I casted Careless Pandas, when they nearly brought back an insane uh, reverse sweep, it was C-Man that subbed in at halftime and turned this team into a completely different monster, and I hope he can do it again today. But of course, coming up with a team of Mix Ready and PDK Kid, as well as Rubix, it's a scary, it's a scary proposition here. But clearly, they've done enough to get it to a map seven as we get you guys another map seven of our plans going into real to 20 seconds left we're seeing a far bastion comp locked in for uh pandas what do you think this means for them I, 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 it's hard to say <laughs> I, I think that's probably the fairest way to put it i i i like i like the situation that we're seeing here for ddos I, I personally pick DDoS. I really do. I think DDoS has this one. I really do. I, I don't know. I just think Pandas might struggle here with this comp, and I think DDoS is in the position to be able to, to expose it a little bit here. Oh, PDK get though. Oh, oh, he goes down no. into the drink, and that's the start you want if you're Pandas. Definitely, definitely a strong start for Pandas, and two more, or another, both DPS down. Just trying to push one a little bit further. Bebop halted onto the low ground. We'll be eating a rock from Rubix for the damage from Nebby, of course, keeping the entirety of DDoS back and will be the pick on the J star that looks to close out this fight as maybe this wants to back up maybe reposition around this corner ddos there i have to ask questions as to why they why they continue to push that cart after they were losing people now they're in a really tough spot here uh they got a little bit they got a really tough angle now to try to get at nebby on that dps yeah i can't help but imagine there's a lot of stuff coming up before this in this series both these teams playing all sorts of cons trying to counter each other in all sorts of different Way. So the Bastion comp, clearly something that they've decided, okay, we can beat them with this, but it's going to be a quick engage with the speed boost. But the C-Man ultimate is going to look to find some value, but it's not going to be finding anybody. Instead, it will be Nebby finding the pick on a PDK kit as well as Buffalama. Buffalama, pardon me. J-Star, your teammate all going down and absolutely no time shredded through by the Bastion. Absolutely. That was a strong performance there from Carol's Pandas. DDoS is going to have to change things up here. I think they need to make some changes. I think PDK, the classic PDK Kid Junkrat would be really nice here, but they're forcing the Reaper. Yeah, he was looking for a flank route for a long time before that fight, and it, it bought uh, alt, or not alt, pardon me, I'm getting the teams mixed up now. Careless Pandas, a lot of time when he was forced to go back all the way around, but it looks like they're going to look for the same engage. The speed boost will come out here. They push out the door. Mix ready. Getting ready. We'll see it coming in a second. Coalescence committed. It will be heals all the way and kills both ways as Nebby goes down. Seaman though, doesn't matter. He'll be picking up three with the barrage. And then the res comes up on a Nebby and they're not out of this one yet. This Bastion looks to hold the point for another bit of time. 
It's just a tough spot right now for DDoS. They need to make some changes. PDK kit is only 38% to his all. It's just not. It's just not working. They need to make some changes right now, and they aren't doing that. And it's. It could be the death of their team. And I don't think Widowmaker is the right play. DDoS Hello. needs needs to make some changes. Honestly, from what I can tell from all the scores that we've gotten out of this match so far, they've all ended so early. These defenses have been so strong from both these teams, and I can't help but notice why when you have a Bastion Comp run this cleanly, they're not able to get in at all, but it will be a sound barrier to engage Nebby trying to shred through all those shields, and PDK kid right on top of the Bastion. The Bastion needs to get back in the side of this own vulnerability field, but he will get halted outside of it. Pardon me, body blocked. Nebby, though, using that configuration tank to take out Mix Ready and the rest of DDoS, one minute, 11 seconds left on the clock, and they look clueless. Honestly, they did not need to use those alts. That could hurt them here. Bebop does have the, uh, it does have a alt here that will not be able to be countered by a sound barrier. He does have that flux. So it, it's going to be tough here for DDoS. And I still have to point out, I have to question the DPS comp here. I don't like the May either. I feel like that might be a mistake. So they really got to get some damage on the Nebby and they're just not doing it right now. J Reaper, a little bit of a traditional counter to the Bastion comp. It looks like they're going to want to work their way around, but 37 seconds left on the clock and DDoS spread all around the point. What on earth needs to happen here? I like this rotation coming out from Careless Pandas here. This is a very smart position out of Nebby. They're just going to rotate all the way around. They're going to play. The high ground isn't so much of an advantage for oh, DDoS. Here. Oh, DDoS takes oh. both healers. That's oh, big. That's no huge. Push. We'll be out of the tanks alive. It's going to be all up to Seaman here to just damage out. But Bebop with a massive grinning flux. We'll be finding kills onto two before members left alive for DDoS. It's going to be just enough to get them onto this point and careless pandas i think you're just gonna look to hold on this bridge for as long as they can oh no what what a play from the most underrated oh, support no. in harmony tier in your teammate basically picking off the of supports on his own with that coalescence huge play from your teammate setting up his team for success that was purely on his shoulders completely neutralizing D uh careless pandas oh but nebby shredding straight through jstar this point can be a little bit more difficult for the bastard to get value if you can find the may wall behind him to cut him away from his healers, but it doesn't matter when you're trying to cross this bridge. It's so difficult. Seaman oh, committing the ultimate no. for good measure, and I'm not sure that was necessary, but 1 minute 58 on the clock, I'm sure he'll be able to get another one up soon enough. Certainly, yes, but PDK Kid does have that Death Blossom finally, oh, and no, Jade Rubix. has the bongos. Rubix is in a tough spot, though, and he just he does the right thing. He takes his uh, takes himself down. Oh, DDoS needs to win the next two fights here, without question, if they're going to be able to push this point any further. Sitting on the same team composition, they will have the Death Blossom up. However, the, uh, oh no, they swap off of the Baptiste, so no invulnerability field will be available for it. And loyalty base is only at 24% to that sound barrier. We're, we're going to see PDK get look for a uh, little bit of a cheeky teleport here onto the back line. No, he's just going to engage with his team. They push up slowly, using them all to the, as much of their advantage as they can. They're going to look to push this high ground and drop directly on top. Does Careless Panda know what's about to hit them? Oh my goodness, doesn't matter though. The Coalescence going down, we'll be picking off Seaman. Big finished off by Buffalo's Lay as the Blizzard is used to engage Bebop, looking to try and eat it, but it's not going to be enough as he gets frozen. Will he get shredded down in time? They'll be up the next man to go down. But the trade right back onto PK, PDK Kid. Tikkun will find the res, and this could be a soft reset for the side of Careless Fans. They could look to turn this into a fight win for them. The hold oh. is huge. The beat looks to be dropped, and it finds enough value, barely reaching that ground in time. But Seaman's already on the back line of DDoS, he's looking to put in a lot of damage, the configuration tank coming in from Nebby, this mobile killing oh machine my. bastion, BDK can drops in on top of it, but it's not going to be enough, as the fight looks to be closed out, 33 seconds ticking down on this point, your teammate needs to die, and he needs to die now, they're looking for a long stagger, oh my goodness, they're, they're going to be dead, they're going to be so long, Also, I'm looking for some value, and you will get it on the Bebop, it's a long hike there, long DDoS hike has off. to reset, oh my oh goddess, my DDoS, goodness. DDoS, 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 DDoS giving away way too much, and they got basically nothing out of that, and it's just, it's, it's a tragic case for DDoS. They need need to get on the cart now. Rubix on that ball is going to try to make it happen. It's going to be tough. PDK Kid on the Tracer. I've seen his Tracer before. It is absolutely insane. If he can get the value, I've seen him get out of it before. But the Greater comes, Flex forcing everybody off the cart. Maybe a little bit early that time. It's not going to take down enough, but it will be enough of a pick to get a pick on a mix ready. Be able to eating a bunch into the wall. Rubix, Rubix looking to engage on the rest of the team. The sound barrier landing for Careless Pandas, but the kill going down still. Bebop down they have a little bit of car pressure here but the re comes in from careless fans just enough to pick off j star but t the support for 
A careless pan is going down infinity, taking out Buffalo. The DPS starting to look a little bit low here for DDoS, but the kills not coming in fast enough. They need to close this one out. They need to close it out solidly. The next ultimate up would be the pulse bomb from Seaman, but he got picked off. Nebby as well. No damage alive for careless pandas. And the kills all going in the way of DDoS. PDK kid with a big uh, pulse bomb there to start to pace this fight out a little bit more in their favor. Your teammate came up clutch again on that Moira, healing their team through it after Mix Ready got picked off, and they get the point. No contest from Careless Pandas, other than Seaman nearly losing his life there. Every time, that second one can be a little bit tough to hold, but the immediate engage, they want to push this advantage more, but Bebop finding the pick on the PDK kid will certainly take the wind out of DDoS's sails. We see Seaman does fall as well as Buff Llama. DDoS continuing these long drawn out fights when they really don't need to, but this time it appears to be working. Yeah, Nebby's gonna be in the back line here, dishing out so much damage, but not nearly as much as your teammate. Your teammate! His coalescences have been huge this entire game. Why can't my teammates' coalescences ever be that huge during my ranked games? Seriously. Am I right? <laughs> right. Uh, we do see loyalty bases coming up on the sound barrier. Mix ready though. Has his to counter. Bebop could get his Gravitic Flux up just in time for this fight as a point pushes towards the end. This could be it. This could be the map. Push taken. This will be a hard one for Careless Pandas to retake wow. if this reaches the end. And they certainly don't want it to. And PDK can get in the better of Seaman. Finding that kill, shredding him down. The sound barrier is still available for both teams. Nebby looking to get shredded down to Finny, finding the kill on the PDK kid. That's a lot of damage gone for the side of DDoS. But Jstar, looking close one out, looking to boob a lot of people off the cart, and it will be enough. Buffalo, I'm following up on a Nebby, and your teammate taking out Teak one with that orb. But the Gravitic Flux is looking to lift everybody up. Swan's taking left on the clock. You might have wanted to hold that a little bit longer, but the pick on the mix ready is going to be massive as the healers all gone, except for this Moira, who will get a coalescence. Your teammate looking to get more value. He finds one onto a loyalty basis. Which base is down, but the kills and the spawns coming in for the careless pandas are looking to have a massive advantage. We get damage down on the Rubik's. We get a little more value swinging in like a madman. The kill on a PD gank kid, though. Again, the DPS so low for DDoS to spawn so much further. Mix ready. Look at value. Buffalama getting the punch in, but not gonna be finding the kill. He's holding on his card for dear life, and your teammate going down. Buffalama looking to be the last man, but it's gonna be closed out. Careless pandas denied the map. Impressive still from DDoS getting it as far as they did it looked like it was nothing it looked like they were done and they somehow pulled it out it was incredible play from DDoS getting to that far and honestly they owe a lot of that to your teammate he came up huge on that this Moira dude, this man actually won all three points with coalescences mm -hmm. absolutely or, or, pardon me the first two and then nearly the last one Dominant Moira play. He was nominated for one of the best supports in Trank uh, in the Harmony tier. And honestly, it, it shows. It shows there. That was excellent play from your teammate. Keeping DDoS alive through that. And then the DPS were enabled just enough to be able to get it off. My question is, is can we get some PDK Kid Junkrat? Because that's really... I need the J Silly in my life. Specs, what do you think here? What are you expecting to see from these teams? Yeah, I, I really think for the success of... Uh... Of DDoS here, PDK Kid needs to go on that junk ride. It looks like they're pulling out the Reaper originally here, and uh, I mean, it, a Reaper Widow is is not the way to go against this this double shield comp that uh, Careless Pandas have been running all map here. I agree. They didn't. Ex they're not expecting the bash, and it looks like again. And I really think they. Rat. So that's uh that would be a big deal for them right now. Um. And uh, I just uh, I don't like that comp choice from Alta DDoS, but. Nonetheless, we doubted them last time, and they almost pulled out the map. So, Chaos Pandas can try to push for the victory and the match. All right, and we see Careless Pandas coming in on the Bastion comp for the attack here. Of course, BDK Kid will have a lot more angles to try and take this Bastion on from the question is, will he be able to get value? Buffalama lining up his Widow shots, looking to take out Seaman immediately. Seaman knows as a Widow, the first shot missed. They're playing close as Nebby sets up to take out all of DDoS. The Rock does not land, and he starts to shred through these health pools. I honestly, now I suddenly love oh the trick. Oh my god, he got I, I love the close hold. I think it's a bold strategy. But PDK kids down. I, I think at this point, DDoS just needs to jump in the water. DDoS needs to get out of here. Of course, they're getting a little bit of time here, but is it going to amount to anything against this Bastion comp? It's inevitable that this one breaks. It's kind of unfortunate you close hold, expecting something a little bit different, but Nebby on the Bastion is just going to put out far too much damage for right. The card not getting pushed, though. They're going to get a respawn and get the hold. They're it definitely. Looks, a little bit further. Yeah. Definitely going to get a good solid recontest here, but what they did also give Careless Pandas was alt advantage. 
and the only they, they do have that window already. They're very close to a barrage as well. Does it matter though when your teammate is almost a coalescence? That's the question. That's honestly a valid point. Buff Llama needs to get a pick on a C Man in order for that, or in order for DDoS to keep success here, because uh, C Man's very close to that barrage. Oh, what pick you said? C Man taking a Buff Llama, taking the aggression at the window immediately dropped. A uh, DDoS just oh, trying to cower behind this point, but two picks onto their side. And C Man using his barrage to close out this point. They're looking to end this one nice and early, not trying to take nearly as long as DDoS on this A point. DC Man did an amazing job there closing that fight out. They saw the advantage being taken after you pop the coalescence and was taken down by the bastion they quickly made the adjustment they needed to and it was just far too much for ddos to be able to handle and they get in top they get back just wow, in they time get to another recontest card the bastion not set up this time he is on the high ground just using that recon form to lay down as much damage as he can but oh, the configuration no. tank will be dropped the loyal to be is not alive to give him that invulnerability field any longer but infinity finally wow. picking up both mom and epi going down but teak will be picking loyal to be back up the damage significantly lower for the side of care of the fan it's seaman just he's getting on the back line the gravitic flux will be put in and it finds one kill on the rubik's that's in one of the tanks out but the spawn of is so big for ddos here you can't help but feel like they need to back up careless fans though isn't done with this fight your teammate committing one of the signature at this point moira ultimates the bongo dropped though for infinity will be getting this damage to increase so much more and increase it will as the kills roll in for careless fans DDoS did a really good job on that secondary recontest. They took a lot of time off the clock there, and they honestly didn't really give up a whole ton. They have some good ults coming up here with PDK Kids uh, on that uh, Reaper getting that Death Blossom. And the ult advantage right now, I think, actually does lie slightly in the favor of DDoS. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what pa uh, Pandas try to do here, if they're going to continue to ride this Bastion or if they're going to make any changes. It looks like they're continuing the Bastion. We haven't seen PDK Kid land a big Death Blossom yet. And it, we won't get to see it now because Seaman is going to be taking apart, absolutely dismantling this comp and using his own barrage to finish off this fight. Get that last little bit of a kill on the PDK kid on the Reaper. I have to question what Rubix was trying to accomplish there. I really do. I don't know what he was doing with that ultimate. And they lost that ult advantage now too. That was a questionable play. PDK kid now has the only one with that death blossom and he needs to make it a big one. They have to get through this. He's on the high ground, he has the window. This is a scary fight to come into. Nebi has every line of sight he could ever want here. As DDoS pushes the point, the halt comes in. The window looking to be dropped soon. Loyalty base just needs to make it up to his bastion if he wants to win this fight for him. The vulnerability field dropped, but the window goes up on the high ground. Will it matter? PDK kid. Oh Uses no. Death on the low ground, but he takes, gets taken out almost instantly. This fight will be closed out. Maybe in a little bit of a sloppy fashion, but the kills all going in the way of Careless Pandas. Careless Pandas right now just are controlling the pace. They're controlling every bit of this. DDoS just continue to run into this Bastion with really nothing to offer. They need to make some changes. This comp is not working anymore. And we'll see if they are willing to make any moves. And currently, it does not look like they are. Just running the same comp. Their playoff hopes on the line. Three minutes and 50 seconds they need to burn down before Careless Pandas can push this point. But they get a forward position with the Bastion. This is huge. They did. They do have forward position. DDoS is being forced into a really rough spot here. They have to hide behind cover and basically concede the cart to a point here. There's High Noon from Buff Llama with nothing, though. And Bebop taking out Mix Ready. Surprisingly, all the picks going the way of Careless Panda. And Heavy getting to set up wherever he wants. He doesn't need a shield anymore. He's dishing out damage like there's no tomorrow. The players from... DDoS trying to play this high ground, but it doesn't matter because Nebi is just denying so much space, even by existing. As the sound barrier drops from Mix Ready, you can't help but feel like that was a mistake as BDK Kid and him are going to go down almost immediately after. DDoS tries to stall the card a little bit longer. They have to win now three straight team fights in order to hold this off. Careless Pandas have four ultimates coming in. They're in a dominant position right now. I don't know if DDoS can do it. I want to pay attention to C-Man with this barrage. He's been huge with them all night. They've been closing out fights left and right and close out fights is exactly what you need on this last point. He uses it. He finds one kill on the mix ready. Two, three, four. C-Man coming absolutely huge with that barrage. PDK gets stuck in the corner. He's last man alive. He needs to hold on his cart for as long as he can, but the cart progresses forward. Four men on the cart, two meters, one meter, and that is it. Careless Pandas take the match and continue their playoff hopes. Careless Pandas, everyone. 4-3 victory, and all I had to say is, see, man, I see you. I see you. That was a play of the game. What a play from C-Man. Huge on that Farah. No answers for him. Oh, they and right into it. 
They walked yeah. right, they had There's no clue what they were walking into. They had no way to stop that at all. It was just a free barrage and just it's all over but the crying at that point for DDoS. Huge play from C-Man. Careless Pandas go on. They'll take on Illusion next round. Wow, what an incredible series. We've heard about this all night from these teams. I am 100% sure that that match did not disappoint. I'm very glad we got to catch it. Of course, coming into these next matches, lots of interesting stuff. Uh, what do you think it means for a team like Careless Pandas, who really seems to have a lot of momentum in their favor going into this postseason? And honestly, I think they look really strong right now. They do. Careless Pandas look good. They're going to give Illusion a hard run for their money, I think. It's going to be an exciting match next week. Make sure you guys stay in tune. Uh, that sets up all of our matches now in the wild card. They are done. Uh, we see advancing out of the wild card, Infious Gaming, and Prodigious in the Discord side. And in the Harmony tier side, we saw Jetpack Cats last night, and we saw Careless Pandas today. Guys, great matches all around. Specs, what do you think? Just an incredible map there. Infinity, uh, silent hard carry there for Careless Panda. Some of the pulls that he was pulling off on that Orisa, just incredible. Yeah, they didn't. They were sitting Yeti, and we had questions about it. And honestly, maybe it was unjustified. Maybe it wasn't justified there. I have good. That was great work from those guys. But uh, yeah, that is the end of the week in the in the, in the Tranquility Community Playoffs. Uh, Door, take us out. All right, of course, some incredible matches we got to see yesterday and today. Yesterday, of course, seeing that go to map seven, another map seven tonight. I can't wait to see what's in store for you guys next week, of course, for tonight. I have been Door at Door underscore OW on Twitter, and I have had the pleasure of casting with uh, Kingdom as well as Yeti, and we can't wait to see you guys again next week. Four kills for BDK Kid. Will he get the fifth one? Uh, but a big shatter from Juko High takes him play from O again, putting the Jeff in big disc. Wins the match. Massive Blossom from Claws getting to the back. An line. impressive job there by Infus Gaming. He really smart. Full hold for Careless Panda. Wow. Hold that four puts the close. Crimson pick up a third. Can he get a fourth? First one will be rocking with the dead bugs. Pick up one. And now we see the shadow step of Triage coming down with the dead bugs. We got three on the point now. And inside. Holy Jalapeno just rolled straight. That's confusing. Max is on the going to take up this victory. The dead block picks up three. There will be illusion. Arise by three in the fight. I fall six. Finding four with the Devil Blossom. And now you better back down, cause I.